With 2020 in the books, the PGF is gearing up to bring another action-packed season of high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Like, oh, oh, this season, wow. we welcome back the bad guy, Elijah Carlton, the undefeated season one champion. Standing in his way of PGF gold is the 225-pound champion, Sam Barbosa, who laid claim to the title in 2020. Meanwhile, lurking in the shadows, is a highly anticipated challenger. Hunter Colvin will attempt to etch his name in the PGF history books. Will the bad guy remain undefeated in season two? Will the nice guy continue to reign supreme at 225 pounds? Or will Hunter Colvin arise from the shadows to reveal a new contender? There it, is. it all goes down. I've been doing this for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Free on YouTube. This is the PGF. Matt Viper, the official sponsor of the PGF. Get your gear now at mattviper.com. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast, available now on Apple, Spotify, and all other podcasting apps. Physical Therapy and Balance Center. Kentucky Signs and Graphics. Get your custom signs and banners at kysignsandgraphics.com. The Grappling Discourse Podcast, available now on Apple, Spotify, and all major podcasting apps. Subconscious Studios, high quality motion pictures. Amanda Sharon Real Estate. She specializes in first time home buying, resale, relocation, investing, and new construction. Give her a call at 904 510 4596. Dr. Cantrell is a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon. He specializes in reconstruction of the shoulder and knee. B&G Logistics, providing ground logistics and support to all companies in the southeastern United States. R&R Group Home, a day center committed to supporting their community. The McDojo Show Podcast, available on Apple, Spotify, and other major streaming platforms. Join the Fantasy League now at pgfhome.com. Scotsman Automations, security, efficiency, peace of mind. Find out more at scotsmanautomations.com. Welcome to week five of the PGF. Last week was amazing. We saw Elijah Carlton do what he had to do to maintain a three-point lead over Hunter Colvin. The bad guy is looking to become season two champion as well as season one champion. How impressive has Elijah been so far? I mean, I think 
after that um, slip up where he took the leg lock with Grayson, I think that he has been on point and that he is he has a strategy now and he's not going to let those points pass him by. And I think with Hunter settling for an arm bar, I think Elijah has solidified a, a good little lead. So. Yeah, and we see now that the blue team has a slight advantage over the red team. Coming into block eight, the blue team has won four of the blocks, while the red team has won three. So tonight, Joe, block eight, who has the advantage? Who do you, What team do you think wins block eight? I mean, for block eight, it's, it's pretty uh, close. Um, it's going to come down to one or two people capitalizing on uh, their matchups, but uh, I'm going to give it to... The red team by a nose, um, and I think uh, Mr. Evan Stapler is going to be the one to clinch it for the red team. And talking about Evan, we saw a little bit of chippiness last week between him and Kevin, and we're starting to hear some rumbles of maybe some of the competitors aren't too happy <laughs> with some of, the, uh, some of the tactics Evan's using. Do you guys think that this will play into tonight's matches? I mean, he's getting ready to face... Um, you know, he's got a really, really big matches against Justin Williams as well as Grayson Webster. I think it's just going to build from here, actually. I, I don't know that Evan's going to tra- change his strategy. And even if uh, even if that did call some like verbal altercation, like I think I think Evan's going like, to persist. Yeah, this is a cl- classic case, you know, when you're when you're in the gym and the uh, lower belt is just a, being a little bit too aggressive. Uh, but in, to come to Evan's defense, I mean, if you look back at the at the video, that's what's been getting him out of trouble. That's what's been making him, you know, just such an uh, aggressive threat. That's what's mm-hmm. been winning it for him in certain cases. So I don't blame him for it, but I can see how everybody else could be a little bit frustrated with some of the some of the ways he's, you know, getting to these positions or these submissions or passes. So last question for you guys. Will the real Kamoy Anderson please stand up? We saw he struggled in the opening blocks, but last two blocks, he's got two chokes. He had a beautiful arm triangle and finished his last match with that mounted triangle. He looked really good last week. He's got his match against Jake Elkins, and we're going to find out, is Kamoy a contender or a pretender? What do you guys think? I, it's going to be very hard for Kamoy to end up on top. So I think that's where he we have when we have seen Kamoy shine, it's been from the top and his uh, pressure from there. So if Kamoy can make it to the top, I think that we're going to see good things. But I, I have a feeling that Jake is going to be the one to get the takedown and end up on top. Yeah, uh, I agree with you guys. I think that uh, Jake's going to be just so so much pressure from top. And uh, but you know, last week we got to see Kamoy, you know, display a little bit of. Uh, action from his back and I think that uh, we might see you know some some more dynamic uh, stuff from the bottom the question is how long can he put out uh, an offense from the bottom because just that top pressure of Jake's just going to be overwhelming I think uh, both him and uh, Grayson will be a seven Hunter Colvin <sighs> yeah survival is probably the word for that match I mean just gonna again try my best I'm trying to sound like a broken record but yeah he's uh He's a beast, man. I mean, in in my opinion, from what I've seen, you know, um, he's he's I mean, he's right up there with Elijah. He's probably the if, if he's not the number one guy, he's the number two guy at least. You know? So here we go, first match of Block Eight. We've got Grayson Webster, the blue belt out of Tribe Martial Arts, and Webster's Karate, and then we have got our second place and guy that's looking to become the PGF Season Two Champion, Hunter Colvin. He's down a couple points to Elijah. He needs this seven. Do you guys think he gets this seven? Um, yes. I don't know. It's already 10 seconds of pass. You know, uh, Grayson's not really doing much, but he's also not in really that much danger. But uh, as I say that, setting up this uh, looks like a Dars. This is definitely the most we've seen. Like, Hunter came in. Like, he is going oh, yeah, that looks hard. Like a deep. He's going to get a tab. Yeah. Wow, that was quick. Seven points on the board front. That's a big, big seven. And you've got to. You have to take advantage of the seven opportunities. And we saw Hunter do that. He's looking like a PGF champion. Just like uh, Grayson, he'll be good. I just think he's a little too green. Just gonna ended up catching him in a dars quick off the bat. Yeah, that one was a blur. <laughs> you know, dude, he's a killer, man. I would say he's he's top top two, top three in this competition, man. He just uh, 
put a, well, I think you got me in a DARS. You know, just mm-hmm. put a clinic on me, man. Uh, yeah, really, uh, really cool just to see him grapple. I mean, it's like really just superb technique. And uh, yeah, got me, got me good. That Darce is going to give Hunter Colvin seven points. He got the submission within the first minute. So added to his total, Hunter now has 49 points. For block eight, that is going to give the blue team seven points. I don't know a lot of what Josh's game plan is. I've seen him on bottom a lot, and he seems somewhat comfortable there. I think he's been pretty unfortunate about having, like, bigger guys on him. But, I mean, I got I to play to my strengths and just I might have to bully on top a little bit. Yeah, he's... He's a great wrestler, man. I mean, he doesn't, he's, as he said, he's new to jujitsu. Man, he brings it, and he's given everyone trouble. Um, so I expect a lot of the same from him. He's going to come at me. Um, probably be smart to pull guard on him. So, again, I don't get dumped on my head because, man, he's, he's so good. Um, so I'll try to dictate where the fight takes place a little bit more this time. So here we go. We've got the red team representative, Joshua Gibbs, going against the blue belt from Georgia, Randy Roden. And last week we saw Randy, he struggled against Jake Elkins. And he really needs to get that momentum. The first couple of blocks, he was looking like the star. Now, Evans kind of surpassed him as the blue belt star of season two. Randy needs a big win here. This is a winnable match for him, and I, I think he needs to hunt for the submission. And here we go. we got a minute for extra points. He said he's going to pull guard, but he's taking too long. That might be a problem if he stands too long. There we go, guard pull. Josh always looks way bigger. Like, when he gets out there and stands next to the guys, I'm like, okay, he's like, he, he belongs in this. You know, he's not he's not smaller, uh, as small as I, I think he is. Randy's setting up some a Darce. His Darce is looking better than last week. So oh, this is yeah, deep. deep. James has got good defense, but he's not doing the right thing. He needs to get his hips away. Yeah, Randy's not deep enough, though. He's barely got the four. There we go. He needs to get that right on deeper. Josh is up to a single leg attempt, but gets whipped back down, back into the Dars. Oh, I like that switch from Randy right here. Going to that vice grip, making everything much, much tighter. I would like to see him maybe even go for a necktie here. No extra points. Josh was just trying Ooh, that single that's leg. that's locked up now. Yeah, that's tight. He needs to let go of that single leg and push away. He puts his leg back in to half guard, trying to step over to the mount. He's a little sloppy. Oh, and he's slipping. You can see Randy's, that choking arm slip. Yeah, Randy's grip is just too loose. It was a good attack, though, by Randy. Just missing the finer details in that finish. Because he was deep enough. Still in the mount position. I'm interested in what kind of attacks Randy has from top. Looks like he's, he's setting up maybe a triangle. Yeah, his best work definitely seems to be when he's on the head. I'd actually like to see him get off to the side and start attacking the head again. Yeah, this is where he, this is where he works best. Back in that side control, looking for that Darce again, but Josh puts him into close guard. Nice, nice job by Josh. Let's we'll see what Joshua has. Yeah, let's see what he got from here. Yeah. Looking to get wrist control. Randy looking to split down the middle, but this is a really tough pass. Randy's creating lots of space there. That nice. opens good up their guard. Job. Good, good, good job. Anytime Josh lifts that head, it starts to come towards Randy. Randy's looking to grab his head with his left arm. All right, so we're almost at three and a half minutes. They both stand back up. Man, Randy, it just his cardio has been amazing. I would love to see him just push his gas tank. This is a match he needs to win. He really just needs to go after Josh yeah, in the last three minutes. You know, pushing your gas tank on a car, not knowing what direction you're going, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going <laughs> to just fly off. <laughs> Ooh, arm drag attempt. Let's go. Oh. Randy took that personally. Yeah, he was like, now nah, I've got to dump you. Guillotine attempt. Up on the okay, close guard. Drives that's that's very out. smart. Joshua's got that. It looks deep. And he's not giving up on it. It's not quite the end. Randy's one. choking himself. Oh, Randy's trying to stack. get control of the choking hand. She slipped in. Slipped out. That was a good guillotine attempt. Whew. Everybody held their breath on that one. I know. 
It's one of those guillotine kind of slam. You almost slam yourself into the submission. He was smart though to get that close guard because he would have been. <laughs> he would have been launched. Yeah. Josh, really interesting. Josh is, is opting to stand. You know, I mean, I mean, I use that tactic to kind of tire the other person out, but. Randy just has unlimited gas. He does, man. So Josh is in the leg. That was a really nice um, movement by Randy on the feet. And Josh, though, tries to come underneath, but now he's in that leg drag position, getting cradled. Yeah, Randy's is just too too much hips. I bet one of his sprawls just has so much force behind it. Yeah, dude. Those legs, those hips, dude, they're so strong. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're hitting a con uh, concrete wall. We got about a minute, 45 seconds left. Josh is doing a good job fighting, though. He's not, he hasn't given up. You know, he's hes still in it. He's looking for openings. He's looking for entries. I think he's got the better attacks, but just Randy's just got too much pressure right now. Yeah. I, I would like to see Randy. He, he attacks where he tries to grab the head. And he keeps ending up back in these half guard situations. I'd rather see him go from the head than to the north south than to the other side. I think he would have a lot more offensive success if he moved that way compared to back into the guard. Yeah. But I mean, hey, he's a blue belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> hey, that's a good vice grip right there, though. Yeah, that was pretty good. There's just a couple of things I'm like, man, if I could just get Randy. Uh, and if I could just like show him a few things over a week, I feel like he could just start murdering. Oh, people. high elbow that's a attempt. High elbow. That Marcelo team, we've seen him go for it that's in his, his previous best attempt match. right there, if he can get that grip. Yeah, he had a nice Marcelo team in his last match. Or in the match prior to Jake's. 45 seconds. Both these guys continuing to move. Neither guy wanting to settle for the draw. About 30 seconds left. Randy's back in on this uh, Dars to mount. Looking for that mounted guillotine, arming guillotine. Has to let go. And there's 20 seconds. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Randy definitely doesn't have that Especially for fire mount. power for, yeah, for 20 seconds. And mount, he, he, he lacks a lot of control and, and transitioning. Eight seconds. Oh, and as I say that, he goes into an arm bar attempt. Three seconds left. And a flying triangle attempt from Randy. Nice match by both guys. I don't remember the match so well. We spent a lot of time on the feet, a lot of time me failing to pass, um, still hunting chokes, um, just not just not getting them. I remember getting like uh, this grip and trying to get him to turn over and then look for Anaconda, but just, just nothing came out of it. Randy's just going to bring it. You know, D1 wrestler, um, like he... He just doesn't carry as great as I was going forward. I um, so had a bit of a back and forth match of that. Um, trying to sweep him was, of course, tough, but uh, it was fun to try. Uh, almost had him with that guillotine choke. Um, jumped up and just couldn't quite finish it. The fingers just kind of slipped off, um, so missed that opportunity. But, man, it was exciting. I think people enjoyed it. Uh, I think the fans are going to enjoy watching that one for sure. That draw adds zero points to both of the competitors, so Randy Zero added to his total is going to give him 10. And zero added to Josh's total is going to give him 9. So for this block, the red team remains at zero. The blue team remains at 7. Here we go. We've got Matt Elkins representing the red team. And he's been off and on this season. And that injury has definitely limited his mobility and parts of his game. But when he's firing on all cylinders and he's out there confident, he looks like a top four contender. Uh, he's going against Sam Barboza, the current champion. And we saw last week Sam finally start to turn on the gas pedal. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be a tough match for Matt right now. <laughs> Especially having to sit because Sam does his best work on top. I mean, Matt's playing kind of uh, a really safe game where he lulls, you know, kind of keeps keeps the bear calm. So, yeah, and I love, I, I just, I, obviously, I wish Matt wasn't injured, but this injury is really forcing him to show other parts of his jiu-jitsu. I mean, last season, what, what did we see? We saw lots of wrestling to chokes. Mm -hmm. This season, he's having to play as a guard. Yeah, he's we, really showing that he's a complete grappler. Yeah, we saw his, his physical last season. We're seeing his mind this season. 
Having rolled with San Barboza, he is so difficult. Like, you get a front headlock on this dude, he is so good at stripping off grips. And Matt's best movement is the guillotine. That and the anaconda. And I think it's going to be very, very, very difficult for him to hit either of those on San Barboza. So I'm starting to wonder with Matt playing this pace because of his injury and Sam being used to playing this pace in competition, you know, is Sam going to be able to It's definitely to turn allows, it up? It allows Sam to be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. just, but it's also giving Matt more time to feel Sam and feel his own body and see what he can do and what he can't do. So right. it's, it's, it's a gamble for both. This is where Sam's super scary because he's got a couple of options here. The, the scariest one is if you put that arm through that hole from this twister side, he's going to grab that Kimura and he's going to take your back. His oh, Kimura Matt's grips are... Like, yeah, don't do it, I'll Matt. Do it, Matt. Don't do it, Matt. Look at the situation. You see that hand <laughs> looking to pick off the wrist? Yeah. Matt's arm is trapped. If I'm Sam's coach, I'm telling him, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to make it obvious, but I'm like, give him that space a little bit more. He almost mm -hmm. reached through, and that's what we want. So, yeah, I mean, it, we still have four minutes, but I see Sam, uh, you know. Matt needs to go more uh, negative, because uh, Sam's a negative guard passing right here, so Matt should go something like an octopus for Asahabi style. Mm. There he goes, he turns that direction, but is leading him right into a choke, so, so he's staying flat. Yeah, and you've got to be really careful coming up and exposing your neck right there. But I, I agree, that for Asahabi, that kind of octopus style is definitely, definitely needed right here. It's going to be the safest option at least. Yeah. Nice base by Sam. Matt's forcing him more north-south and kind of clinching looking for an escape through the back, but Sam's just has too good of a balance on oh, top. There goes. Oh, there Don't yeah, do it, yeah. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that Kimura is just bait. He's like, this is the only option. Yeah, and it's something that we talk about in 10th Planet all the time. Anytime you're teaching Twister side, you want your opponent to think you don't want them sticking that hand through that hole, but you're ready to pick that off. Sam's wasted a lot of time. I mean, yes, he's controlled this match yeah. for the majority, I mean, the past two minutes, but he hasn't had any offensive attempts. Yeah, that's why he looks like he's trying to pick up the pace now, but, yeah, he's he's been waiting for Matt to make a mistake, but he needs to he needs to just force his way through. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's in a really good north-south joking position. His body's in the perfect spot. Yeah. He's going to switch that into an arm and guillotine. I like that switch. Yeah, really nice switch. Looks to sit. Matt does a great job, though. Not committing. It was crucial. Matt didn't commit either way. Matt's got really good front head choke, so he probably understands what Sam's trying to do here. And he's yeah. just, he's dodging. Yes, I completely agree. But this is where you cannot let nobody survive Sam's bad game. Yeah. Oh, it's just the position's good. getting deeper and deeper. Yeah, this is not good. Two minutes to work. Nah. Sam and a half back looking for that rear naked choke. He's got control. The underside's got, uh, the underhook's got control. Yeah, he's doing, a, Sam's doing a lockdown on Matt's uh, bad leg. Looking to get that vice grip in. You can tell by Matt's hips that he's stuck. He can't yeah, even move. Yeah, that's it. That's deep. That's a wrap. There we go. That's a big six points for Sam Barbosa. He had that goal of that week uh, where he didn't get any points, but since then he's been back choking everybody. I'm excited to see how he finishes this season. Old Captain Barbosa himself. Yeah, solid, uh, solid performance from him, man. I definitely thought that it was going to be a, a little bit of a chess match. Sam's not overly aggressive. He takes his time, very calculated, and then when he uh, when he sees an opening, he, he makes his play and, and looks for the finish. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be uh, – I was trying not to get Kimura the whole time. If I remember right, he, uh, he wound up taking my back and, and squeezing my face off, I believe. Yeah, he got my leg stuck in a lockdown, man, and I really wanted to tap up in front of my leg, but, you know, here I am. I, I couldn't go out like that, so my man got me for the for the choke there at the end, but well played, Samuel, young Samuel. Again, it's just mad hours. Like, I just, I go out there, and I let them figure out how they want me to submit them, and, like, it was, he came out a little bit more aggressive than I was expecting, 
but like his aggression was very like focused. I liked how he rolled. I don't know if it's from like having to deal with his brother or whatnot, but I liked how he rolled. That rear naked choke gives Sam Barbosa six points. He did not get the submission within the first minute. So added to his total, he now has 41 points. Zero points added to Matt Elkins' total. So Matt remains at 18 points. So for this block, the blue team is at 13. The red team is at zero. It looks like I'm going to, because I'm not going to wrestle with anybody right now. I don't have the extra energy to do it. So I'm going to sit guard. I'm going to sweep him. I'm going to take position. I'm going to start smashing his soul. That's it. But I'm not going to do like I did with Gibbs the first night where I'm squeezing everything. I'm just going to put my chest on him and make him hate life. So, Primo looks like a hard dude to finish. Um, he has gone with some really good guys in the, in the last couple rounds, and he just looks super hard to finish. So I think that'll be a good match. Um, you know, he looks, he sits to his, he sat to his butt a couple times, um, pulled guards. So I think passing will come into play there and, and I'm just gonna look for the choke on him try to rank up some extra points but I think it'll be a good match have to watch for his wrist locks from the front from the Kimura trap gotta watch out for those apparently so keep my hands and feet inside the car at all times so last match was really important we have three competitors now guys in the 40 point total we've got Sam Barboza in at 41 we have a new leader in Hunter Colvin at 49 and Elijah he has not competed now he's at 44 it's crazy, right? We've already got three competitors on their way to 50 plus. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we've got this match, Kevin Primo coming out against James Regina, and I love that Kansas City rash guard. Yeah, it looks and awesome. Man, Kevin, you know how happy Kevin is that James sat guard right there? Yeah. Kevin just looked at the camera like, uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, well, maybe Kevin's not happy because he almost got his back taken in 10 seconds. He's in on the way. Yeah, but his good job of yeah. defending his own legs. Kevin's trying to ankle lock. I mean, Kevin's oh, got man. a good ankle lock. Yeah, but he's exposing his own legs to heel hooks, and that's deep. That is Ooh, deep. that'd be a huge win for Red Team if they get that. Yeah, Kevin's not. Kevin did a good job slipping the heel right there, cause that was yeah. looking deep. But was that just a willpower, or these guys look like they're just having a good old fashioned shootout? Yeah, this is one of those wild, wild west shootouts. Ooh, here we go! Oh God, my! Oh Jesus! Oh, that's deep! Oh, this heel! Oh, 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 belly no. down by Kevin. 10 seconds, extra points. Oh, David just like oh. fight for his life, too. He looks like he's going to get looking out. to do some oh, like Boston God. crap. That's a good opportunity, but Kevin didn't capitalize Kevin should have let go. Oh, there we go. Oh, go belly down position. more. James needs to defend a little better. His, his Yeah, Kevin should have let go right there and went back to the top position. James got a good look on these heel, heels, oh, but he's oh, just oh, not oh. capitalizing oh. either. But Kevin does a good job of booting. Nice job. Kevin slipped multiple heel hooks. Really nice job by Kevin. Ooh. Now, we got to talk about the gas tank. Oh, God. Kevin just, wait. he talked about how he wasn't going to squeeze uh, anything. Yeah, and he just went full force <laughs> on those feet. And in the first minute and a half, he squeezed five different submissions. And he's back, he's back <laughs> on the on. back now. Oh, James, he's got his back. Looking, well, to, looking to come up to a mount. I mean, Kevin doesn't have any. I mean, he went all out for those straight ankle locks. Yeah. And, and th that's the issue, man. You go out for a straight ankle lock, especially oh, in a professional awesome. atmosphere like this, you better get the break because if not, nobody's tapping. We got oh, four minutes, what a two set. seconds left. On that one, yeah. It's funny because all the other competitors would be like, man, you know, they're in a really bad spot. But at any moment, Kevin could get the tap here. This is one of Kevin's best options. James puts positions. on a body lock oh, from the back. Oh. Kevin is breathing heavy. This is bad. The... Kevin's got good back defense, but go wrist lock again. Yeah. But James said he saw he he sees it coming. I don't know, man. If you're not like used to rolling with a guy that is that good at it, I mean, it's just one of those moves yeah, that you get overconfident. Yeah, yeah I think you get overconfident. Right here, you stick on, your arm too deep one time, you're getting your arm popped again. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Let's look to see if Kevin can get a submission from his back taken. But I would much rather be like much rather be controlling here. that bottom elbow there. Yeah, James doesn't seem to be uh, too concerned about that uh, uh, body triangle. Usually people would switch that out, but he doesn't. Yeah. He's Kevin's like, having a little bit of trouble slipping, slipping his shoulders to the mat. Yep. No, it looks like Kevin's trying to get that uh, <laughs> submission. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get that straight yeah. ankle lock. And you saw, man, James was trying to get his foot out. There was definitely a lot of torque on that foot yeah. right there. That was a good good play by Kevin and using offense to get him out of that situation. That was James's best. <laughs> chance right there to put Kevin out man honestly I, if I'm James I want to keep Kevin moving I don't want to even take the back here too yeah. soon he, Kevin does a good job of ooh, ooh. Face, face crank 
uses it to get to the back. Kevin's definitely got a raw face, especially after that last match with Evan. Yeah. All right, we got about two minutes, 30 seconds left. These guys are probably mm -hmm. at like half capacity <laughs> of cardio Kevin's right now. super heavy on that bottom leg. Yeah. James not letting him come up to the top. Anyways. James does a good job of maintaining top position, but Kevin's in on the leg of his nice. own right here. Kevin's best leg lock into that is heel hook attempt. Knee bar. He needs to switch this into a knee bar. It looks like he's trying to rotate it into a 50-50. Oh, no. ankle lock attempt. James needs to attack or move or something. There you go. Just, Kevin straight ankle locks a little sloppy. I mean, he just doesn't really have position. He's just trying to crank with his arms. James is spinning for that heel. Kevin needs to understand that he has a heel too. <laughs> yeah. And with that said, James closes up his legs. Now they're in this 50-50 variation. Kevin's winning Kevin's the knee. His head. Kevin's saying something. He's a little bit of time. He comes back in on that ankle lock. And he gets the tap. Oh, oh, belly Kevin. down straight ankle lock. Oh, he's dead. No way. Well, okay. if you don't get it the first 20 times, Keep 20, trying. 23 more. <laughs> I think I think me and him were trying to rip each other's legs off the whole time. Dude looked dude said he was tired. Quote unquote tired. Like that was some bullshit. Um had his back, uh sat, did an arm drag, took his back, like uh got there really successfully, got my body lock. Um dude's super hard to finish from the back. Um just couldn't really get clean or even get across his face and get face and get my hands clasped together to actually like get a squeeze on his head. Um Rushed it a little bit and then got into the leg battle. He was really trying to freaking rip off my ankle, went belly down. Um, felt really good there. Got in super deep on a heel hook, got a good bite and like twisted. And he just licked me dead in the face like his leg was made out of metal. Just not fucking. Good. I was like, well, I guess this is just not going to break. So that's cool. Um, got a little lazy. He got my foot and just kind of got on right on the end and ended up getting a tap on me. So uh, pretty much went in there, I uh, was exhausted from the Evan match, I just, it was bad, even from the Evan match, it's, it's something with my, whatever it did to me, like my heart rate, I can't slow it down anymore, and it just, if, if I push too hard, I'll get to a certain point, it just won't come back, and went in there with him, and, and we went back and forth, and I had it in my head, I was like, I just gotta get a quick finish. Before it goes too like before it goes too far, so I was like, "Hey, we're here. Why not? Let's see if we can get the pull." Didn't work. I wanted to switch off to a heel hook or do anything else, and I heard all the instructions coming from everybody. I was like, "Hey, this sounds really great. If I can move right now, <laughs> I can't move." It's like, "Hey, I'm stuck here. I'm gonna give it everything I got. Exhausted myself out. Pretty much went dead. Uh, dead weight on him. Just like, hey, I think my back control, like my back defense, is good enough to where I can make it through this and." Let's turn around and see how it goes from there. That straight ankle gives Kevin three points to his total, so he now has 14. That adds zero points to James's total. He remains at three. So for this block, the red team is at zero. The blue team is at 16. Uh, from my understanding, I think Jake's supposed to be, he's, he's a wrestler, not having been doing jiu-jitsu for too long. Another super big guy. That might be one of the biggest guys here, I think, when it comes to height and weight. That's a big guy. I mean, everybody's a big ass guy mm -hmm. with a little bit of technique, but big ass guys. I'm gonna go out there, try to, I'm just gonna try to kill. I'm just, that's it. So we got Jake Elkins representing the red team going against Moy Anderson. And man, this is, this is a fun matchup here. And Jake Elkins has looked like the real deal. He looks like he's one of the four best guys in the season. Kamoy's coming off two straight chokes. So Kamoy can get an upset, because I, I would consider this an upset from what we've seen so far. If he can get the upset victory, especially if it's a choke, he's That's right back huge. into the yeah. thick of things. Here we go. Kamoy looking like he wants to stand. That might be a terrible mistake. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I love the post-match interviews when guys try to stand with Jake and he just goes, no, yeah, I'm yeah. the best. Oh, Kamoy looking for a single leg. Ooh, Jake gets in the front in hit. Head. 
Nice move. Jake's already deep on that. Yeah. Nice. Jake's heavy hanging on that head. This is where Jake yeah. does his best work. I like that switch to the Kimura attempt. Kamoy's doing a little panicking from bottom. 28 seconds for yeah. the extra point. Kamoy did just enough to hide that hand, but he's not out of danger yet. I like how Jake's hiding his foot inside the half car. Yeah, Jake's got a great angle. Man, that right on's getting deep, and we're, Jake's looking for it. Jake's looking for a darts choke here. Kamoy's nice. panicking. Jake goes belly down. Almost, yeah. I think Kamoy still has control of his own elbow there. Kamoy did a great job going belly down right there. Jake almost locked up that, that Darce attempt. But gives up his back. Good job of Kamoy. Kamoy. Doing a great job from bottom, just staying safe. Oh, man. All we know about Matt takes Jake out he is minutes. a monster. Jake is a monster, man. Yeah. He's looking for that punch choke. Might be just using it to open up those underhooks. Oh, yeah. He's got one underhook, got a nice cross face. And Jake has got some professional offense, man. I mean, we heard Kamoy say, like, you know, Jake hadn't been training too long. Like, no, nah, dude, it looks like Jake's been training submission grappling for years and years. Right. Yeah, he just yeah. flows into offense okay. after offense. On top. This is huge, though, for Kamoy. We have not seen Jake Elkins on his back for an extended period of time. Yeah. I called it, guys. Jake's got like a really good bottom game. Two bears. As far as like lo knowing how to come back <laughs> up from bottom. This is nice. Jake is working an overhook. He wants to stay down there. Okay. Looking to sweep. Nice. Kamoy kept his weight back. Oh, oh no. Jake Elkins nice. with a butterfly sweep. Okay. <laughs> Man, that's a highlight right there. Nice sweep by Jake. And that's got to be kind of disheartening for, for Kamoy. You know, he gets to the top position where he wants to be. Yeah. Gets swept Jake pretty, passes pretty guard. quickly, and now he's already passed again. Back up towards the head. Kamoy's not going down without a fight, though. He's, no, he's been, he's been fighting for these fight. underhooks, winning the underhooks. Oh, this has been a great match. Oh, that's, that's deep. Jake's up now. Kamoy looks like he's got back to a half guard. Man, Kamoy is awesome. Yeah, awesome hip work on bottom. Yeah, you got to think, though, he comes from MMA background. He's probably used to being smothered by a cage. <laughs> yeah. Jake looking to get that Kamoy grip again. And I think at this point, Jake's going to be happy with any points he gets. Yeah. Okay, so you got about 2.30 left. Jake just forced that wrist yeah, down. Yeah, the top. Yeah. Wow. No, that was deep, yeah. <laughs> Man, Kamoy is, uh, is, is a G dude, stud athlete, right? Um... Got on top, man. I, I looked at big arms. I'm like, hey, ain't pulling one of those arms off his body, so uh, go chase his neck, right? And uh, bad news, he doesn't have a neck. He has traps, <laughs> so you can't even you can't pull his head off. You know what I'm saying? I tried. Um, uh, yeah, man, solid. Uh, even got swept at one point. Uh, I, I was trying to chase that choke and wound up on my back, fed into the sweep and and back into that that top pressure. Um, I was just kind of looking for the dilemma. Same thing. If you if you can finish it in the first minute, you get a look at at you know sit. If you if you can take seven in the first minute, that's the strategy, right? Take take the seven, but you shouldn't even really be chasing the four, in my opinion. If you if you think you can win, right? So um, <clears throat> after the first minute flew by, I was just trying to stay on top, and I, I really wanted to choke to try to collect six. Um, it's funny how you kind of catch yourself thinking about that in mid match, but uh, eventually it kind of got in the Kimura and. It went outside the hip. It didn't really lock it up all the way, but I mean, it was over. Yeah. This guy was just, I knew he was a wrestler. I told everybody I wasn't going to wrestle him, but based on his stance, I was like, yeah, I think I could really shoot and take this guy down. I shot, I took him down. I think he tried to guillotine me, then I ended up on top. And then he just used his big self and sweep me over. Then a whole lot of stuff happened. Just him on top was just terrible. Like all I felt was just a brick, just falling on my chest, just crushing me. And he ended up by slaying my arm. I feel like, shit, let me just tap because he already crushing me. He got my arm isolated. It was just a matter of time until he just, you know. So he got the win for that one. 
But I was a big guy, though. Very big guy. <laughs> that straight arm bar is going to give Jake Elkins three points added to his total. He now has 35. Kamoy has zero points added to his total. He is at 16. So for this block of points, the red team is at three. The blue team is at 16. Is it going to be a tough task? He'll probably sit on me. I don't know, though. Maybe he won't. Uh, if he does, I'll feel a little bit better about passing from the top than trying to do anything from the bottom. Uh, just because he's very savvy with the leg locks, too. See me finishing him pretty quick, but it could be a challenge. And then I've got Steven, and Steven's also someone who's going to be very hard to choke. So, man, this is an exciting one, and this is so important for Elijah Carlton because we saw Sam Barboza have to take three against the squid building. So I'm looking now just at those two guys. They're going to be one, two. How they compete, like if they can get extra points that the other guy missed. So, again, we saw Hunter get three. If Elijah gets six or even possibly seven in this match, it's going to go a long way to crowning him as the season two champion. Yeah, that's going to be a diff very difficult task against Zach. So we'll see. But Zach can tap anybody still. Like his leg yeah. entries are profesh, and so exactly. we'll see. Zach sits, and this is where Elijah wants to be. He wants to be on top passing, and Zach's guard has looked much more vulnerable than it's looked, um, you know, outside of the PGF. Ooh, Ooh sock lock attempt. Sock lock, just, hey, Zach, respect, respect where you put your feet, bro. Zach tries to go reverse to Lahiva, kiss of the dragon, uses Elijah's it to come on inside. top. Elijah enters it to Ashi, oh, uses that to ankle pick up. Elijah doesn't need to get in this leg battle. He needs to find a way past the guard and find a way to get to the back. Yeah, just like wrestlers, like leg lockers, they meet another leg locker. Yes, exactly. It's like, it's like a Spider-Man meme. <laughs> yeah, look, Elijah. <laughs> look, Elijah now. He's already, he's like, nah, we're doing this. We're getting into 50-50 battle. Let's yeah. go. So do you think in his mind he's already conceded the three points? Man, I for this moment, he has, yeah. because it became personal. And he All gets right, the tap. Yeah, it got personal and... Lights feel really bright tonight for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I'm Because you're such a superstar. Yeah, I guess so. Lights shine brighter when you're a star. For real. It's like, um, man, it sucks he's hurt. But uh, I'm here to do what I got to do. Um, inside hill hook in, about, in a minute, exactly right. Yeah. Nice. Not, here, not here to fuck around. Got into 50 50, and uh, he ended up catching my heel. That ankle lock gives Elijah four points added to his total. He got the submission at the one minute mark. So his total is now 48 points. That adds zero points to Zach's total. He remains at nine. And so for this block of points, the red team is now at seven. The blue team remains at 16. Steven Aiken. Okay, well, uh, that's going to be a good match, I think. Um, I've never rolled with Steven, so I don't really know what to expect. I think he's pretty much even top bottom player. So I don't really know much about his wrestling or standing game. But um, I think for me, I'm, I'm probably looking to play top in that match. Pass guard. Um you know, same same deal, pressure, and that one to get the win, so. Big Mike. Big Mike, bro, game. dump truck. Yeah, uh, he's heavier than me too, so it's gonna, it's gonna be that thing of like, I know he's not gonna wanna get under me, and I was talking about that with someone else, and like, I'm not afraid to play my guard, but also, I don't know if that's the right weapon to pull in the moment with him, uh, Overall, we'll see. I'm gonna fill. I'm gonna fill it out. I'm gonna tie it with him a little bit. I'm sure, uh, just to see what happens. I don't think anybody's gonna throw me or do anything crazy. And if they do, then cool. I mean, I'll figure out what to do when I'm in the air. I guess. And... Man, you talk about bears. This is the bear man. Man, these guys are but beasts, and they both looked awesome this season. Both guys have had really standout performances. And Steven definitely just has better offense overall. Uh, than Megan Mike Johnson. You know, he's shown us he's a little bit more versatile. I think he's also got a little bit better bottom game. I'd love to see him highlight his lockdown. He's really shown some professional lockdown work. I'd like to see him pull guard, get the lockdown sweep, and work from there. Guys, make sure that you are supporting the podcast that support us. 
uh, Lonnie Jones podcast, Grappling Discourse podcast, and the McDojo podcast. Got some hand fighting, some collar ties. A little bit of feeling out action. Yeah, neither guy wants to sit as much as I would like to see one of them sit and just go, come on in, big guy, let's do this. And this is the type of match, though, that you could see these two guys, like, since they don't want to be on the bottom uh, of one another, that we could see some kind of... Steven's backing up. You know, wrestling that, that's not really leading anywhere. Steven my, stall wrestling. Steven might pull guard if he keeps backing up. 45 seconds in, neither guy's really established, even really established a dominant grip yet. Arm drag attempt by Mike. Yeah, but you saw that arm drag. I mean, Mike's on his heels. That wasn't a true arm drag attempt. There wasn't really any threat that Mike was going to do anything off of that. Mike's trying to press forward now. Or Steven, I mean. Make Mike sure, hanging on the head. Make sure that you guys are giving to the super chat. Womp, 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 super chat. All right, these boys are wasting a lot of time. they got to get this to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, these six-minute matches, man, and Steven's kind of complained about the six-minute matches, them, them being a little too short, and he's making this much, much shorter match. I mean, a minute and a half in, and, and nothing's happened from either guy. I think six minutes is plenty of time. I, I you just, just got to change up the way you roll coming into this. You just got to go You've got to take more chances. Yeah, you just got to be more risky. I think that's that way for any rule, like any different rule set. Like you uh, adapt your training to whatever rule set you're going to be competing yeah. against, right? So yeah, you train differently for. If you ACC sign up. Why are you complaining? Like you should, you right. should have had that already in your mind. Mm -hmm. So two minutes in, and this is the point. If I'm Stevens' coach, I'm going, dude. Let's just pull guard. I either want to see you get a takedown in 30 seconds or pull guard. I, I get it though. You know, sometimes you got somebody. If I had like Jake, I would try to, you know, take my time too. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, but when it's been two whole minutes of the same stuff, just a dance. This is a this is a waltz. This is this is a rumba. A rumba? Is that the rumba is the back. That's the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've seen really one arm drag attempt from Mike. Mike, what'd you come here to do, baby? Sit down. Yeah, you just heard. I think you just heard Matt Elkin say, "Hey, Mike." What did you come in here to do? Just sit down and get this action going. Now, now even the competitors on the side are telling them, imploring one of them to sit. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised that Steven is allowing this to keep going because he, he had some of the most like mentally just sharp minds in this. You would think that he would just pull guard and you know, just to get the action going because he's missing out on attempts for, for submissions too. Yeah. Guys, make sure that you're going to mattviper.com, and if you are a PGF fan, go purchase one of those rash guards. The blue and the red are both mattviper.com. Yeah, support your favorite team. Oh, foot sweep attempt by Steven. Yeah, that was nice. He should have he should have chased that down, though. That's not going to get you any points, though. You can hear Elijah on the sideline just saying, you're not going to get any points with that kind of action. There we go. These boys are picking yeah, it up now. Well, this is... You know, Elijah and Hunter both are on the sideline, and Sam both just going. I mean, honestly, the blue team's in the driver's seat. Yeah, red team really needs this win. Elijah needs this. Because Elijah now is one point down to Hunter. So, again, that extra point would tie him back up. Yeah, it's two minutes now. They got It takes at least a minute to get something go, to a submission going. So they, well, well, and that's the issue, though. Is like, if you did sit now, if you're Steven, if you're a lockdown player, the lockdown takes a bit of time to work, especially with a guy that's got the base of, of Mega Mike Johnson. Yeah. And so if he gets in the lockdown, he's going to waste a minute just trying to get the sweep. Both boys look exhausted already from, from this salsa display. Yeah, I think this is just the anxiety of I don't want to be on bottom of this guy. I'd rather, I mean, I just don't want to test that part of my game, you know. Yeah, well, they won't get to test anything. 90 <laughs> seconds left. They should have just came on the mat and just hugged each other and left. Get the same result. This is just frustrating as a viewer to watch and as if you're one of their teammates who needs these points. You know, you're telling, you're telling your teammate, hey, you just got to go. Go for broke at this point. There they go. So the boys are opening up a little bit. A minute ten. Got one minute left. 
And so at this point, I mean, even now if you end up on bottom, yeah. But even so now, even if you end up on bottom and he passes, there's, there's I mean, no time to work. Yeah, especially when you have your underhooks are gone. And the, the same thing for uh, Mike. He's got to go, but he's also stuck now in this lockdown. Yeah, Steven, man, immediately, though, into the lockdown. I mean, that was a really professional lockdown. <laughs> Having to just frame, though, to get some space. He didn't like his arm positioning there, so now he's got a pimp seconds. hand in on that right hip, or I guess uh, Mega Mike's left hip. Just a terrible position for Steven to be in for submissions, and Mike's also kind of stuck. He's got to go for something. He's got to allow Steven to have space so that he could attempt something. Uh, he's already he's working that underhook. There we go. In six seconds, off. though, it's just not enough time. Yeah. Even if you're being choked, you could you could last through the clock on that one. <laughs> that was definitely going to be finished. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. With Big Mike, I've seen his matches obviously so far, and he taxes people. And so I was trying to figure out, I was going to make him make a mistake. That was the plan. And I thought I was definitely going to make him do one of those bull rushes that he kind of did that one time. And uh, I expected more of those, or I expected, you know, I, I base checked him once or twice with some like trip, foot sweep, kind of whatever deals. And, and he was durable, man. And, and I was feeling, he started breathing heavy and I thought I wasn't. And so I was just, I thought I was going to get something off. Honestly, I thought something was just going to materialize and it didn't. And I definitely didn't want to dump the tank to hunt for it against him because I knew that that would cost me dearly. And dude, at the end of the match, like I was just trying to rest a little bit and you saw he like, he dove on that head and arm on me because I kind of took the brakes off or took the gas off at all, you know, and didn't even have the brakes on at all. I was just kind of like time was about to run out. And then he just tried to get that head and arm, which, it's never untapped to that. Not, I mean, I would have tapped to that if there was more time, but he wouldn't have gotten that had there been more, you know, more time. That would have never happened. So we had a standing battle. I don't know. I should have sat guard or something. Uh, they were calling for you to sit guard, but you don't. You just you didn't do it. What was the idea there? Um, I don't know. I I should have. Um, for sure, but um. I don't know. I thought he would eventually sit guard, and I felt as if like I could, I could pass his guard, what so I, which I did. We did. He eventually sat guard. I passed. Went to chop and block. Uh, set that arm triangle, and dismounted. And it was like a few more seconds. Probably would have finished that. So he was, you know, I think he was, you know, looking forward to Elijah too. I think he was trying to conserve a little energy. So. That was part of his strategy. That draw adds zero points to both competitors. Steven remains at 22, while Mike remains at 12. The red team for this block is at seven points. The blue team is at 16. Evan Stapler. He's made two people quit to pressure so far. Quit to pressure, Evan. Yeah, the, 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 red, the guy who did the rap song. Did you see the rap song? No! How many people you tap? A lot. How many times you get tap? A lot. How many times you get pinned? A lot. How many times did you win? A lot. How many times... I don't know much of, um, much of anything about him, but I've watched his matches, and I think that I can just just do what I did to, to James, hit to him what I did to James and Zach, just overwhelm him with the pressure. I might not even have to attempt a submission to get tap on that one. All right, here we go, last match of Block 8. And this is an exciting one, and I think this is what really sets the PGF apart from other shows is, here we go, man, we've got two blue belts getting ready to go at it. And, and Evan, to really establish himself as the blue belt star this season, he needs two wins this week. Evan coming in hot. <laughs> yes. Well, Evan's got the cardio, man, and we've seen it. He overwhelms, dude. See, that's the pace you need for a six-minute match. Yes, 100%, Joe, 100% right. And here we go, man. Evan going to start attacking the face a little bit. Yeah, forearms to the face. Ooh, a little smother in action. That's rude. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely super annoying, and it, it can definitely throw you off your game. You're not used to that. Yeah. He's trying to bait him to do an arm bar so he can do his pass. Yeah. You're right. 
And a lot of Evan, like, st like stopping Evan's game is just not reacting to some of his bullying tactics. Mm -hmm. Just say no, kids. Yeah. <laughs> he's looking for you to unlock the guard to just let him pass. Hey, this would all stop if you just let me pass. No extra point. Yeah, Judo Justin looks like he's trying to play some close guard, maybe to this arm bar, well, but that would be a terrible idea. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to keep Evan close so he doesn't get You see how he tried to change the angle? Face. I mean, that was just beautiful by Evan. I get it. Some people might not like that tactic, but he got Justin to open up, and he bully passed right past. We've seen yeah, him use that pass every single match, almost these, every match. These punch chokes are just crude. He is yeah, just, I mean, he's not even in position to do a punch choke. No, he's just, that's a little... That's like... <laughs> Just Yo, unfriend to Evan on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put your fist in your face. Oh, jeez. Yeah. How many friends you got? Not that much. <laughs> After this. <laughs> Not that much. But man, look at that pressure, though. Yeah, good. Yeah. I would love to hear... Justin's and thought process. Yeah, I mean, Evan doesn't, he's not even looking for neon belly. He's just like, yeah, I'm just going to use the space a little bit more. We got four minutes. Well, this is definitely like ramping up, though. So we saw some of this with Kevin, but this is definitely kind of a, a, little a whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, he's working that underhook, and this is where Evan's dominant. Yeah, he does good jujitsu, good jujitsu, and then he does a move where I'm just like, man, you don't need to do that. Well, and it's it's not necessarily he do he's doing things that aren't accomplishing. They're not really accomplishing anything. Yeah, it's not helping your positioning. It's, if anything, you're giving energy to your opponent. Yeah, because now they're like, dude, I'm not letting this dude tap me. I would rather die than tap to this dude that's been grinding my face. Yep. But if you slip up and get on bottom, then he's on the chopping block here. Yeah. His arm triangle's profesh. Yep. That's deep. And Justin's been tapping early. Yeah, that's deep. Won't be surprised if they get this. That's there deep. Oh, oh, let's go, Justin. Oh, okay. Oh, Evan with a <laughs> big us. win. We're talking about a star here, guys. I'm telling you, Evan has impressed the crap out of me. So we see Evan, I mean, he comes in with that pace, Joe, that six minute pace, gets immediate takedown, and just starts bullying Judo Justin from the guard. But we got to remind uh, Evan that this is, you know, this is art suave, you know. This isn't, <laughs> he's going a little too, a little too okay, rough with some of his right. ways that he achieves his positioning and his attacks. And, and, and like I had said before, I think that I'm okay with those t kind of techniques if it's progressing the action. Like, I need to have that, I need his arm to move so that I can go to neon belly or, or something like that, but... Uh, he was just in head and arm control from side mount and just... Yeah. I, I honestly, digging. I don't know about that. I, I really think that he's... There were times that he was using it, like, just inappropriately, like, in the sense that he wasn't going to achieve something, but he's breaking his opponents, and that's what the PGF's about. Psychological. It is meant to find out, can you do... 15 matches. Can you stay mentally and physically strong the entire time? And we are seeing a blue belt break guys that have been grappling three, four, five times longer than him. So whatever tactic he's using that's not he's against the rules, him. man, no. keep doing it. I mean, he's winning. Yeah, but he's painting a target on his back. He brutalized me. I, was, I, need, I, I told uh, Grayson, I said... Uh, I think when I go in for my interview, you guys need to give me a doll so I can point where the bad man touched me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, shooting the breeze with Evan out there, and man, he just, he's, he's next level. I want to train with him often because yeah, he just, he has that. I mean, he's a killer instinct dude. That one also um, just actually went um, exactly the way that I thought they would. Um, I didn't think I was going to finish him with an arm triangle. I thought it was possible, but I, I mean, I thought I was going to get a side control and just make him tap again to pressure. But. Moving that knee over to mount was pretty easy, and then the arm was just there. So, it, oh yeah, dude, I just don't like it when people just try to relax, really, because yeah, I, I don't, I don't want you to breathe, honestly. I just want that. Oh, that's all I'm thinking about is just like crushing your face whenever you know, I'm in there, and you're, he's like, he was trying to chill in, in like close guard. I was just like, I don't like this, dude. I'm, like you're trying to breathe and shit. So that arm triangle is going to give Evan six points. So added to his total, he now has twenty five. Justin will remain at four. So for this block, the red team ends with 13 points and the blue team ends with 16. So now we add one point to everyone on the blue team. 
So let's look at the blue team's new totals. Hunter Colvin is at 50 points. Sam is at 42. Steven is at 23. Kimoy has 17. Kevin has 15. Randy, 11. Grayson, 9. Justin, 5. And the few differences on the red team, Elijah is now at 48. Jake is at 35. Evan is at 25. Matt, 18. Mike, 12. Joshua, 9. Zach, 9. James, 3. So we've got a change in leaders again. We've got Hunter Colvin now, first competitor to 50 points. And these team points, like, that's the difference. The blue team has won five times, and the red team has won three. Two points separate Elijah and Hunter. Man, if you're Elijah, you kind of kind of be sick just a little bit. Your team's letting you down. There's a lot of money on the line for the, that top spot. And we got to talk about Evan Stapler again. You know, he's now in fifth place overall. He is killing it. I mean, he's ahead of some black belts. He's ahead of multiple purple and brown belts. Do you think Evan can keep it up? I think Evan can keep up the pace. I think he can keep up the tactics that he has now. I don't know how much longer he's going to go on this winning streak. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I, I think he's still going to have a good showing. I think he's still going to remain. I think he's going to make it to the tournament, but I, I mean, I don't know that he's going to beat out, you know, any of those guys. They're, they're way ahead of him right now. So I think he's, he's in a good standing for tournament. Yeah, I think uh, Evan is now the most wanted man alive at PGF. Uh, he's got a bounty on his head, and uh, they're sending out assassins for him. Um, I just feel like, I mean, it was a good idea because it did pay off as far as he is number five. But now every match he's going to have is going to be just a scrap. Uh, because if you were in the sidelines and you were watching, you know that that's coming, or you should expect that, or you should take that personally mm -hmm. and probably come after him before he comes after you. Um, but other than that, I mean, he's going to have a hard time getting submissions, but we're, we're as the fans, we're going to get some good, some good action from Evan. Oh, so sure. look out for Evan in the future. Yeah. So I got to ask you one question before we start this next block. Have the competitors been too friendly to each other with this team element? Do you think guys aren't going at each other as hard as they normally would, you know, and also they've got 15 matches and you heard that with Megan Mike saying that he thought that Steven was saving himself for Elijah. So how much of that is in play and how much do we need a guy like Evan to kind of stir the pot? Because again, man, like, Hey, we're red team. This is my captain. How many times have we heard that? This is my captain. This is like, no, no, no. This is a guy you're competing against. I get it. There are teams, but this is still an individual event. Yeah, I, I agree. I think everybody has been a little bit too friendly. Um, if you're like in the number one or two spot, it's your job to be a leader of your team because you need them to build up morale so they can win and give you more points. Uh, but uh, I've seen people that are just tapping early because they're on the same team or they feel like they're not going to win. With animosity, people are going to hold off a little longer in these submission attempts. People are going to get out of things they shouldn't have or finish things that they shouldn't have. So uh, as for us as the viewers, we want to see the best – a version of these competitors going against each other. Uh, we don't want to see people giving up um, prematurely. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, especially as the season goes on and it progresses and they are uh, having to survive the wear and tear. Is that going to slow pace down or, you know, we'll see. Just like Evan was saying, he's like, I don't want you to rest. That's why I'm messing with you. Is You know, I, I want your cardio gone. And so... And Evan's got great cardio, so but I think I think he'll be able to keep up the pace. There'll be some, you know, that will, and I think some will start slowing down. Their bodies are gonna start making them go slower. Well, we've seen okay Elijah and Hunter and Sam get tons of submission, but we're starting to see now the PGF itself submit guys. It's starting to take out, and you're starting to see guys' will and their energy starting to be drained from the grind that is the PGF. So Matt Viper, the official sponsor of the PGF. Get your gear now at mattviper.com. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast, available now on Apple, Spotify, and all other podcasting apps. Physical Therapy and Balance Center. 
Kentucky Signs and Graphics. Get your custom signs and banners at kysignsandgraphics.com. The Grappling Discourse Podcast, available now on Apple, Spotify, and all major podcasting apps. Subconscious Studios, high quality motion pictures. Amanda Sharon Real Estate. She specializes in first time home buying, resale, relocation, investing, and new construction. Give her a call at 904 510 4596. Dr. Cantrell is a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon. He specializes in reconstruction of the shoulder and knee. B&G Logistics, providing ground logistics and support to all companies in the southeastern United States. R&R Group Home, a day center committed to supporting their community. The McDojo Show Podcast, available on Apple, Spotify, and other major streaming platforms. Join the Fantasy League now at pgfhome.com. Scotsman Automations, security, efficiency, peace of mind. Find out more at scotsmanautomations.com. All right. We're glad you guys came out here today. We're going to go over some safety rules to make sure everybody is safe. If you can't follow the rules, we can't have fun. If you can't follow the rules, you can't play. I'd rather you guys get mad at me for yelling at you for following the rules and going to the hospital because you're missing an eyeball. Dude, look, Evan got the hamburger meat all the way out. What's up, dude? Got that chest hair showing? The zipper broke, so it's like... Oh, come on, Evan. Keep it together, man. He wins a couple of games and then he pulls out the taco meat, dude. Mm -hmm. Brandon? Yeah, nice I'm to Aaron. Nice to meet you. Aaron, you're the owner? Yeah, yes. Okay, nice. It's okay, so first of all, thank you oh, for, letting awesome. us, for letting us bring him up. So Glad you guys came out today. Now, we did have a, a bet. The first one the first one that cries, yeah. what, what's the punishment? Uh, well, we were just betting on who it was going to be. <laughs> and you remember I took... I took one, and then you said that you thought it was going to be uh, Kevin. Was gonna be the first one to cry. Oh, I'm definitely going to cry. <laughs> All right, you ready? Go! Give me some It's not even your fault. I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Well, the team should be even now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is it, dude? Hey, one more two Jeeps out there that we have out here. Yeah, and, uh, one of them just got ran into and saw some more action. <laughs> So pretty much, even though he's hurt, he said he's going to go out on his shield, like he's just going to do his thing anyway. He's an adult. <laughs> She's like, I'm still in. <laughs> She's clean as a whistle, darling. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Dude, what happened, Kevin? I thought I got closer. Oh, yeah, I, was, I was trying to pick her off and hit her in the head. I got really close a couple times. I was like, I was about to get her, and all of a sudden, shit my forearm. I looked down. I was like, please do not, don't be pain. You know, hide behind something and hide behind your mouth. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, but cover, but I'm saying, will you just run through everything while somebody's shooting at you and you shooting at me? No. 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 I got my I got my payback on this dude. Ah, very nice. I, I was, wondering who that I was. was. In the hole here. It's like he ended up coming around the side though. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I didn't say go, I said no. <laughs> I think oh, everybody just started yeah. shooting. I swear to God, I heard go. I just no, because he's like, is everybody ready? I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> this is not your uh, black belt art, huh? No. Yeah, me neither, bro. I'm surprised you weren't doing it. I thought you were going to be popping us and whatnot. It was I'll, your idea. Uh, Kevin shot me in the gooch. <laughs> I got Kevin. Kevin looks like he got jacked up. Oh, hey. <laughs> Time for some barbecue. Indeed. Ooh, big bow! Hey, Jiu Jitsu fans, get ready for an action packed season of Jiu Jitsu with the PGF. We're teaming up with Fantasizer. Just download the free app and pick your favorite grapplers for your chance to win $1,000. No strings attached. Put down the remote and take out your phone. Download the app and contend to win $1,000. Jiu Jitsu fans, it is time. Six minute sub only matches where every second counts. Are you ready to play? Go to pgfhome.com to learn more. This is the Professional Grappling Federation. Game on. Block nine is championship block in my mind. It's got championship implications because Elijah Carlton's going against Stephen Aiken and Hunter Colvin's going against Jake Elkins. If either guy slips up, either loses or draws, I mean, the other guy's gonna take a huge step forward to becoming season two's regular season champion. Of those matches, which one are you most excited for? What do you think, Jen? Uh, I'm always excited to see Jake Elkins. Um, I just feel like uh, him, his match is probably going to be the one to watch. What about you? Yeah, I agree. The Hunter versus Jake, it's... I think Hunter's going to pull out maybe a rear naked choke, but Jake is going to put up an amazing fight. That's my prediction. Man, I think this is actually Hunter's toughest match because he does his best work on top. We have seen Hunter get on top of guys and dominate, but I don't think he's going to get on top of Jake, at least from the beginning. He's going to have to use his guard, and he's going to have to find a way to either submit from the bottom or get on top, pass, and get Jake's Elkins Yeah, back. we have seen Hunter very uh, intimidating from the feet, but Jake is not intimidated. And so now, thinking of Evan Stapler, you know, he, he's really, again, coming into his own and becoming a star and, and a talking point. I mean, who would have thought when you saw the lineup, okay, the PGF roster at the beginning of the season that at block nine, we'd be talking this much about Evan Stapler. I mean, honestly, no offense, Evan. I thought you were just going to be an afterthought. You know, yeah. you were going to have a couple of good performances, but I definitely didn't think you would be one of the main, main, uh, main storylines. So he's getting ready to go against Grayson Webster. I mean, how is Grayson going to handle Evan's brutal style? Grayson's going to need to stop being nice. Um, he's a lot uh, stronger than Evan. <clears throat> but it, as far as belief goes, Evan's got, you know, banks full of it, you know. So I think that this it, it is going to be a mindset situation. I think Evan's going to capitalize on the fact that he's here to fight and Grayson's going to just fall short as usual. Well, I think that Grayson doesn't need to be content with going to the bottom. Like, even if he ends up at the bottom, like, he needs to fight his way back up to the top. Don't be content with putting in the lockdown and stalling there. 
you, you know, get back up to your feet or get back up into a, a passing position? Come on. Come on. Kind of the, kind of the same as with Randy. Um, you know, strong guy, good wrestler, great top pressure. Um, he's also great at passing too, but I don't, if I think I stand with him and try to wrestle with him, it's just going to be worse for me. I'm going to try to dictate where it is. Probably again, pull guard, um, try to at least get some offense going off of there. You know, try to play off my back best I can, get to a top position. I was looking for the sub. I'm trying to put six on ball for everybody. I need to be one of those top four at the end of the season. I'm not trying to leave here being an average guy. I need to be one of those guys in the limelight. All right, I think this is a great matchup for Kamoy. I mean, we've heard that Josh is going to immediately sit, and, and, and when Kamoy's on top, and, and he's just a completely different drafter. I, I like some of the things I saw from him in that Jake Elkins match, but he did get overwhelmed by Jake. Most of the guys have, though. But I think this matchup really plays to Kamoy's strengths, and I'm looking for him to finish with some type of triangle variation. All right, we're six minutes. Got a minute for points. Five seconds in. And, yeah, if you're going to sit, though, like Josh, I mean, definitely at least play on the feet for a little bit because you want to you wanna try and take as much of that one minute off the clock so at least you're not getting that extra point scored on you. And you might be surprised your opponent pulls guard. Then you're on top. Yeah. Oh, ankle pick by beautiful Kamoy. ankle pick. Right into the pass. Kamoy's going to have some really good highlights from this season. He's definitely had some matches that didn't go his way, but when he's been on, he's looked really, really good. Kamoy in the white rash guard on top, just applying pressure. I like his pressure on the hip there, not allowing Josh to uh, recover his guard. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Very subtle detail that, I mean, it goes a long way in controlling your opponent. Tell Josh is just struggling on bottom to to escape or transition. Kamoy still on top, looking to establish. He really wants to get Josh flat here. Josh doing a good job getting to his side, trying to get up to his knees, it looks like. But Kamoy, man, with a heavy cross face, finally accomplishes his goal. And this is where Kamoy's now going to start to go to work. Kamoy just leaning all his weight on to to Josh's chest. Yeah, Kamoy, Kamoy's thick, man. He, he, he's he's definitely a thick fella. Josh using some explosions to create space. Yeah, you've only got a few of those. I mean, Josh used a lot of energy recovering guard, and he immediately got past it. Kamoy sits for the back. Nice entry. back take. Kamoy showcasing some back control. Mm, that was sloppy, see? Oh, triangle. Right this is triangle. his move. Oh, it looks like Kamoy might be setting up a barrage. No, he's just using the zombie to get that arm loose. Man, Kamoy can find those triangles. That was beautiful. Yeah, very slick entry. Like Josh instantly is aware. Barely got his hand in. Yeah, he had his hand in though, and he did a great job right there surviving. Kamoy looks like he's breathing a little heavy. Josh looks like he's tired, but he's he's still in the fight. Yeah, Kamoy made he made a couple of mistakes on that back back uh, attempt. He had the arm into position, but he just lost his chest connection trying to get that straight jacket. I don't think he needed the straight jacket. I think if he just would have got that gable grip together, he could have crushed through Josh's face. Yeah, his elbow was already deep. He mm -hmm. Like you said, he didn't need it. He could have finished right there. Kamoy looking for a hip bump sweep, trying to time it. As soon as those legs open up, Josh needs to get out of that guard. Yeah, I would love to see Kamoy really pop those hips and go for a triangle. Hip bump sweep triangle. That's what I would love to see. Three minutes left. Kamoy walking his legs up Josh's back. Both men breathing heavy. Oh, Kamoy pops that triangle. Nice. Quickly adjusts his legs, gets the angle, trying to zombie the. Oh, he's got this one. That's it. Cuts the angle. He cuts the corner really nicely. Kamoy's looking to finish. Mm. That choke, Six not points. Right. And, and he, he gets it. Really Kamoy. nice work by Kamoy. Um, everybody was saying I was I was gonna crush that guy. I kind of felt it too, but 
I don't like to go on matches with that kind of mindset because it's gonna be very embarrassing. You go out there like, yeah, I'm about to kill this guy. Then you get caught with some sneaky wrist lock or something. Then you looking silly. But yeah, I went out there and I did what was expected. Another triangle, like I said, that's just what I do. First, he got me down, and I was trying to, you know, sweep him. You know, best I could. He had that cross face on me. And then. He went to go take the back. I think he was able to slide out of that, but ended up right in his guard, almost right into a triangle, I think, the first time. Thankfully, I was able to stack and fight out of that. Um, and I was trying to, you know, break his posture or break the guard open. Man, but he was just good. Uh, couldn't get it done. Um, eventually, he got that arm again and, you know, got that triangle in uh, much tighter this time. And, I mean, that was it for me. I had to tap out to that one, too. That triangle gives Kamoy six points, so he is now at 23 points. Josh Gibbs has zero added to his total. He remains at nine. So for this block of points, block nine, red team is at zero and blue team is at six. Yeah, I think we're about the same height. He's like 5'11 and a half like me, like just, just shy of six foot. And I think he's about 220 as well. So we're like right at the same same size, man. He's stout. He's uh, it's very uh, – he's got – strong will i mean i've seen him have some great matches and um, i think that one will be a good one you know I'm gonna, is that a match you're gonna win uh it's a match I, I i i plan on winning i might not even have to attempt a submission to get tap on that one so that's what i'm going to be looking for on him and grayson as well both of them just kind of seem a little inactive on bottom not really trying to do much of anything so if you just try to relax on bottom with me it's not going to be a fun time Man, I love that. And that's the way it should be because, again, how do you open up a guy nicely? You can't. If a guy just goes, hey, I'm going to cross my hand and just wait this out, you got to start digging into their face a little bit. you got to start letting them know, like, I'm not here to just settle. We're going to we're gonna go to war for these six minutes. Here we go. <clears throat> 55 seconds for extra points. Nice collar tie by Grayson. And it's funny because like Evan hasn't even really shown good wrestling. He's just been aggressive, and so he's getting the takedown. Like some of these guys just aren't shooting. They're just they're expecting to call a tie, do some hand fighting, and Evan's just coming in. He's pushing the pace, and, and he's getting on top. He's finding himself on top in most matches. Yeah, I like that. I like that frame that Grayson has. Evan yeah. shoots nice takedown, and look immediately past the guard. That's how you want to train your double leg. You saw Evan use that right hand to just. Pass that leg through, immediately pass the guard, and this is where now you're in Evan's world. Yeah, Grayson took a little too long on that stand up and just let Evan get comfortable on the feet. We're almost a minute in, so Evan's not going to get that bonus point, but Evan's not the bonus point type of grapple. Look at him applying that pressure, trying to get that sub in that Von Kill situation. Just knowing you got five more minutes with Evan, look out already for that punch I expect some punch choke action from the top now. Oh, he's just pressuring through that mouth. Yeah, he's, try he's trying to get that head and arm again. And Evans in a head and arm professional. Grayson turns to the side. Looking to elevate. Excellent job by Evan. Maintaining mount. That was beautiful work. Look, I went from like not paying attention to Evans' matches to like I'm glued. <laughs> I want to see what craziness happens. Evan might be looking to gift wrap here, or he's so content on that head and arm. I think he's just, he's got his, he's almost in the perfect position. He's in there. He's got yeah, it. Yeah, he's got that. Grace has been one of those who's been too quick to tap. I'd like to see him fight through this. That's it. Man. Professional, man. We have a star. I wanted to see him get, like, he had to, like, really to be the blue belt of the season, to be the under belt that guys we're going to talk about and remember from season two, he had to win these two matches. And he had to maximize his points, in my opinion. Yeah. He needed to, after this week, be in the running for the top five. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, like, going up against uh, Evan, just like, oh, you know, he's a blue belt. N not underestimating him, because he's a stud, you know. Um, but I, I thought I was going to handle myself better, man. But he just, uh, he's a killer, you know. Um, I, f I feel like this has really motivated me to like, I definitely, if there's a season three, which I'm sure there will be, I'd like to come back. I mean, I want to beat every one of these things, man. It's very motivating. 
and I want to be season three most improved. Mm -hmm. That's that's my goal oh, is yeah. to stop being a partial artist and get after it. And it feels really good, dude. Like seriously, did, did you I, think did you think coming in that you were gonna be in a position like this I, halfway through? Honestly, I wouldn't even think about the standings. I was just gonna like, I'm just gonna go in there and do my best, and get to it, and we'll see where that lands me. But uh, yeah, that feels good. That arm triangle gives Evan six points. He is now at 31 points. Uh, Grayson gets zero added to his total. He is at nine. So for this block of points, the red team is at six and the blue team is at six. Elijah Carlton. <clears throat> oh, the bad guy. Uh, dude, Elijah's good, man. He's on fire. Any mistakes people make, he, ca he catches them. So that's the one that I got to be sharp for. I, I, it's going to be another one of those where if it takes all six minutes, I'm going to have to like play it really smart and not get caught. I know that he's really good. But I also think that if I can get to my spots, I think he's in a lot of trouble. Um, he does not have a path to victory. He has a path to stalling me out, um, but no path to victory. Zero percent chance Stephen Eakin passes my guard tonight. Hundred percent chance I choke him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. I love the bad guy, dude. I'm such a fan, dude. I love the bad guy. I like that confidence. Yeah, man. I love it, man. And dude, let's be real, man. Elijah needs to send Evan a Christmas card. He's, like, he was the last pick on his team, and he's performed like a superstar. He's been a top five guy. Sweeping up all those points. At yeah, the dude. So without Evan, man, Elijah would be even a couple more points behind Hunter. But here we go, man. I, I love the confidence. And Steven, man, yeah, a disappointing performance in his last match. I, I would really like to see him come out, get after Elijah. And Elijah immediately pulls guard. Oh, right into a leg man. entry. He said he was going to choke, but takes the ankle lock instead. Oh, dear, dear. I don't know what to think about that. I mean, you can't. how do you criticize a seven-second submission? Exactly, but you also have to consider your strategy for the totals. He's the bad guy, man. He's, he's, the he's bad like guy. strategy out the window. I mean, Elijah now is 33 for 33. He's a PGF legend. I mean... I, I can't criticize what he's doing. Beautiful work. So that was four, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Stephen Egan. Yeah. Um, what did I say in the last interview? That he had 0% chance of passing my guard and 100% chance of me subbing him. Is that what I said? Yeah. Well, eight seconds. Sub of the night, right? Dude, I don't know. Coming in, I thought, you know, obviously the whole thing, we know that he's one of the best guys that's in the room. And... It's definitely seeming like it's between like him and Hunter, based on what we're seeing from most of the matches from everybody. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know how that happened. Like I walked right into him, and his legs are longer than I guess my mind could calculate that in that second. And he just hit me with that little dummy sweep, and then my foot was there, and I was just like, "Oh man, yeah, that happened." So that straight ankle gives Elijah four points added to his total. He got the submission within the first minute. He now has 52 points. Stephen Aiken has zero added to his total. He remains at 23. So for this block of points, the red team is at 10. The blue team is at six. Randy Roden. Wrestling Randy. Yeah, that'll be a good one for sure. May see a little bit of a different strategy for me in this one. I know he's a blue belt, right? Super tough, but he's also a D1 wrestler or ex-D1 wrestler. So we'll see. Might see some standing at first, see what that feels like. But you might see some bottom game for me today. You might see a guard pull. Oof, that's the guy. If there are three guys I don't want to be under, it's him all three times. Like, he was, he's just got crazy pressure on top. Um, it's probably going to be a deathmatch hand fight, just not trying to get under him. All right, here we go. Another red versus blue. I love when it's red versus blue. I just think it really even adds to the match. And it really, really matters. And we see the red team right now at 10 points, the blue at 6. So both leaders of the blue and the red team are looking to get some points in this match. And Joe, who do you think's got the advantage coming into this one? Uh, I think Mike definitely. He's just, you know, he's a purple belt with more jujitsu experience and he's bigger. Randy immediately shoots, but runs into that wall that is. Hey, that's what I want to see. 
Oh, oh ankle pick. pick. Beautiful. Nice little that. hip switch by Randy. Mike switches that and Oh, he needs to put the, the hook in. He's almost got the truck hook. He's inching for that hook. He needs that single hook to really control Randy, and he misses it. Randy not content to be on the bottom. See, this is this is how we, this is how we right. fight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is what we look for in PGF. He's going to look for that ankle pick again. Okay. I'm going to see Mike's hit. Randy got on top. He got his wish. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mike not committed yet. Yeah, that's the issue with that type of stance is you just you're leaving that yourself open to that ankle pick. But Mike's back up, and he sees Randy's uh, strategy. And Randy knows, man, Mike's game. He, he's not gonna just fall over. Randy's level changes are so crazy. No, a little cartwheel right. pass. Oh, Nick Rodriguez. Randy tries to shuck Mike. Mm-hmm. Wrist Just control like, by Randy. Mm-hmm. Mike's looking like on the defensive right now, a little defensive wrestling. Yeah, he's been blitzed. He's had about five or six takedown attempts in, in under a minute and a half. Mike sits guard. Randy looking to pass. A little step over attempt. Yeah, Randy's not going to pass from that distance. Randy is, is really trying to cartwheel or just step around, and Mike's too good for that. You're not going to just step around Mike Johnson's guard. Mike forcing a half guard. This is an interesting battle right here, this half guard. This is definitely Mike's preferred guard. He's looked pretty good here. Also, Randy's best position, too. 100%. He's really good at attacking the head from here. And you see him wrapping up that guillotine. Mike looking for an electric chair, maybe. Maybe electric chair sweep. Mike needs to have control over that elbow, don't let. Mike's looking for that old school sweep a little bit. Yeah, I love the old school sweep. Very rarely do you see it. We've seen it in quite a few attempts this season. Randy needs to make sure he doesn't drop his hip to his left. Nice, nice oh. job. That's just an experienced wrestler. Yeah, good wizard. Using that really wizard to control wizard. Mike. But his leg is a little bit up. And they both look like... Oh, oh Randy. Beautiful. Nice, tuck nice tuck under from Randy. Immediately past the guard, and this is the moment where I tell Randy, hey, take about 15 seconds here, 20 seconds. Just catch your breath, put some weight on him, and let's try and open him up. Yeah, absolutely. He's very strategic. He's got plenty of time. Get your gas tank full, and then hit him with everything you got. Mike breathing heavy. Yeah, Mike's definitely used more energy than Randy. I've just been so impressed with Randy, the way he competes. I mean, yeah, I, I haven't seen him take a deep breath all season. And he's he's getting better every match. Yes. Some people are the staying the same or getting worse. Randy's one of the few that are getting better with every person yeah. he goes against. And that's also, and like Steph was talking about, if he would just sit down with somebody really knowledgeable and like tweak a few things on his game, he could be really dangerous from those good uh, positions. Super dangerous. We could see him come back and PGF. I Especially, like, let's say we run this back in a year. PGF oh, Season 5. Completely different Randy. Right. Dude, completely different. Mike's struggling from bottom. He's a little bit too flat on his back. He needs to get back to his side. He's got a little butter half playing. He's playing a little butter half. We, we saw Mike attempt one leg lock attempt. I'd like to see him maybe use that butter half to try and enter into a leg position. I think that's Mike's best chance to, to get the victory. And I bet Randy's never really experienced a butter half, so he's probably struggling to, how am I going to pass this thing? It's a hook with a, it's lifting me. I think a lot of Randy's strategy is just get control of the head. Yeah. <laughs> Grab the head from everywhere <laughs> and good things will happen. Yeah. There mean, you go, Randy. Every time he threatens the choke, Mike has to let go. Has to, you have to respect it. But he loses his base completely. That's the trade-off. Nice seconds. pass. Nice pass. I'd like to see Randy do some IBJJF tournaments. I, I really oh, think he, he can win, win murder. Everything oh, like yes. He could be world champion. It was yeah. just like 30-day 30, 30 training. Yeah, Mike definitely breathing hard. But Mike's one of those guys, man, that's going to be, he's so tough to tap. Yeah, but he's also not moving much. So. He'll be, his defenses are up, but his 
offense is almost at zero. He's got about 50 seconds left. Yeah. And this is one of those important matches, I think, for both these guys. If, if they, they could have got some points, yeah, they gotta dig deep. this is going to hurt both their chances to make the playoffs. Guys, make sure you're giving to the Super Chat. This is amazing entertainment for a Friday night, so make sure you're giving, giving back. Ooh, Ooh, step I love over. It. I love it. Into Randy, where did that come from? I like it, Randy. I like it, but it's just a little bit, a little bit too late. I lo man. I like that pace, though, like we were talking about. Like, some people are going to be able to keep up that pace for the entire season. I think Randy could keep it for the whole match. He's just yeah, Randy's he's saving too much. He's an animal. And respect to Mike, man. I think I think Mike showed pretty well during this match. Never got close to any submissions, but he's got overwhelmed by Randy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a very fun match. Um, just a lot of hand fight. Um, Mike strong, very, very strong. The, the biggest deterrent for me, like trying to get under him was just like, I know if he get on top, then that was gonna be a done deal. So um, luckily I was able to control the match for the most part, but still just not being able to finish. Definitely like a, a recurring theme of this tournament. <laughs> Wrestling Randy tried to put a pace on me for sure. He's an athlete uh, for sure. Um, it was a good match. like. I, you know, I planned on sitting guard. I didn't want to like wrestle with him the whole time, so um, wanted to work a little half guard, which I got to a little bit. Um, but he was really like trying to, which is common with a lot of wrestlers, trying to go around my guard, and like I just trying to engage him, like even like to engage him like shin to shin was like seemed so difficult. But like uh, I think we ended up in half guard, um, transition to like had. Um, almost like a twister setup for a second there. Um, pretty close on that. Um, but ended up, he, he got out. Um, he passed my guard for a little bit. Um, but I, I didn't really feel in danger when he was on top of me. I just was able to regard. So. That draw is going to give both competitors zero points. Randy remains at 11. Mike remains at 12. So for this block of points, the red team remains at 10. The blue... The blue team remains at six. Dude, uh, y'all come find me uh, at Ironclad Wrestling or at Pop Bear Elkins on all social media. Um, yeah, man, like just trying to be authentic, dude. Trying to, you know, like all American guy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm planning on wrestling with him. I know he's a good wrestler, and like I just want to have some fun. So I think we're gonna have a little bit of a wrestling match. No one's wrestled me so far. I've been dying to wrestle. So. <laughs> Zach did for a little bit wit bit until I threw him off the mat. Oh, I'm gonna show him that uh, Oklahoma or Oklahoma wrestling is better than Alabama wrestling. So we're gonna find out. <laughs> oh, I'm so pumped for this. Shots now. fired. Let's go. Let's this is match of the night. I mean, this is the one I think we all had circled coming into week five. And again, championship implications for both these guys. If Jake can catch a choke, I mean, he's right back in that top two picture. Here we go. Oh, oh what? He said wrestling. Oh, oh there we comes. go. Oh, man. Empty promises. I know. I'm kind of shocked now. Yeah, I know. I'm like, my mouth just dropped. I was like, wait. I felt like I was <laughs> promised a, a toy on Christmas and I got cold. I mean, this is definitely the path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is definitely... <laughs> This is definitely the path to victory. I, mean, I know for we're jujitsu people, but man, that was like tantalizing. I know. I know. I was like, dude, Oklahoma, let's yeah. go. Alabama, I'm in Al I mean, this, Al this Oklahoma wrestling. There it is. <laughs> Hunter takes the top. Jake looking Ooh, to elevate. He, Hunter's so good at float passing. Jake, get up. I know you can't hear me in this match. It's already <laughs> half that, but you need you to had, get out from the bottom. You ever position. had your coach just yell, get up at you? That's always a light move. <laughs> Look at this um, underhook oh, battles yeah. too. Like these guys That's really are fighting for these underhooks. Jake should be super proud of his guard. I mean, the sample sizes we've seen, it's definitely much, much better than I think people expected. Hunter's passing is amazing. Look at that body lock. Imagine man. how much power Jake has to oh. lift. You. That That's body crazy. lock pass. I mean, yeah, he that had was... that escrow, barely an escrow. I think he had two fingers and in the escrow. And the control. Neon belly to the mouth. For him to threaten Jake like this and stay on top, that's 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 a lot of control and power. Impressive. Yeah, very, very impressive. impressive. 
But does he lose style points for promising to wrestle? A little bit. That would be only for us, a, though. He could have sure. had an A+, plus, but he's about to get an A-. Minus. Oh, no. I, in the back. Chair sit. It's Classic funny. Hunter. The, the two, the two uh, leaders both promised us. Elijah promised us a choke. In seven seconds, got a, a leg lock finish. And Hunter promised us wrestling, and he sat in less than a second. Yeah, well, you, you expect he that came from back the bad to his guy. senses, though. Like, you know, Hunter came there, he saw Jake, and he goes, eh, never mind. <laughs> Hunter did wrestle up from his butt, though. That's true. He did kind of, he gave us something. Yeah. Hunter crossing his leg. <laughs> that's not, not satisfied. <laughs> that's not Oklahoma wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine John Smith at Oklahoma State. Like, hey, boys, uh, we're sitting for our butts today attempt. and coming up in single legs. Yeah, that, that body triangle is I'm, not I'm kind of glad they did. I'm kind of glad they didn't wrestle, though, because we are three minutes and 35 seconds uh, left, and there's, you know, there, it doesn't look like anybody's in real, real danger. It looks like it's going to take a while to set up any of these submissions. Yeah, Jake's in trouble. But he's hand fighting really well. Yeah. And I mean, he's channeled some Kevin Primo uh, weight distribution here. He, yeah. He's got yeah, opportunities to, to slide off and get his head to the mat, but he's not hanging his weight. Jake's, uh, I mean, uh, Hunter is an expert down uh, in, on the back, so. Yeah, he is. And he's looking to go through your jaw. I mean, there is no, oh, I'm just going to tuck my chin. Like, well, you're going to get some broken teeth. I wonder if that will work on Jake. Because Jake is a pretty tough guy. Nice. Jake's almost there. He's got his head to the mat. He needs to get that arm nice. up and over. Look, he's trying to transition to a head and arm, keeping his head low. Nice. Find a way to your feet, Jake. Jake with a stiff arm. Man, Hunter's an animal. And I love, just watch how he float passes. You see those hips just pop up, and he's not giving Jake any space to stand. Jake probably doesn't get to feel this kind of forward pressure very often, so he's doing a really good job of not overexposing. Yeah, we're going to see Hunter's going to transition to the armbar now. Can he pull an armbar? What submissions work know. on Jake? He's, oh, he's, he's getting it. Yeah. He's going to get that. Oh, man. Oh, wow, that's it. Nice armbar. Wow. <laughs> what a man. Ooh. Yeah, and that's just strategy right there. Hunter felt both in his match against Kevin, or three matches now. We've seen Hunter, he goes for the rear naked choke. When it's not available, he switches off to the armbar. He did that against Zach Edwards. He did that against Kevin Primo. And he just did that against Jake Elkins. What amazed me is how strong Hunter is. He was forcing his way through on, a, on Jake Elkins. Who that does that? That is a fully grown man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Um, tough, toughest match of the tournament so far. Um, I uh, saw him wrestling with um, the other wrestler, Randy. Randy from Duke, and he did really well with him. I was like, um, and then he finished off Kamoy today, and Kamoy was talking about how strong he was, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to wrestle with him. I sat guard. Dude's like unbelievably strong. Um, ended up getting a sweep. And then the way I played him is he's like super explosive. So I was using my pressure, like tripoding to pass and like get through, but I wasn't like staying attached to him. So he could like just sweep me and use his power. Ended up getting to his back, couldn't get the choke, um, and ended up having to settle with the arm bar for the triangle. So Hunter's one of the real dudes here. Everybody knows what's up. And um, you just real recognize real, you know what I mean? I knew that he was the real deal and vice versa. And so I think we both kind of wanted to find out and sort it. and. It was awesome, dude. I really enjoyed it. That was that was a fun, fun match, right? I mean, I came out with the L, but uh, that's why I'm doing it, dude. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was good. I wanted to invert him, so he, he merely sat um, respecting the wrestling game. I was kind of curious, like, is he going to stand up and do this? Because that would have not that would have been poor uh, a poor decision, I think, tactically, right? He sat um, it, where obviously his decision played out well in the long run. Uh, I was trying to butterfly invert, invert, invert. I, I thought that I could get a look at the legs, man. He did a great job leg pummeling, you know, while his hips and stuff were in the air and swiveling hips. Couldn't get a look at a leg anywhere. Um, eventually went up on my back and just did really, to be his size, really strong back pressure. Um, dude's really solid. Uh, eventually wound up, he threw the triangle in tight and I was trying to defend it, defend, and then it turned into an uh, arm bar situation. Um, man, almost like Americana even, you know, it was really, uh, dude, solid play. Created a dilemma all the way through. There's levels like mad respect, you know. So that arm bar gives Hunter Colvin three points. He now is at 53 points. 
Jake Elkins has zero points added to his total. He is at 35. Red team remains at 10, and the blue team is at 9. Oh, oh Matt. Yeah, Elkins. Was it? Oh, man. I don't know. I wish I had my cardio because I love grappling with Matt. I mean, have some good scraps when we're in here. Like, hey, he's one of my favorite people to grapple with. So I couldn't tell you how it'd go. If I had my A game, I'd try to smash him and see, you know, if we come out on top. But with this, I'm just going to have to play whatever I can play. I hate that his knees tore up, though. It bothers me. All right, so we've got Matt Elkins versus Kevin Primo. And, guys, really interesting storyline developing in this block that we've got Hunter Colvin now in at 53 points and Elijah in at 52. So they're one point apart. So the team point this week is either going to tie Elijah or it's going to give Hunter a two-point lead. And this is one of the matches, red versus blue. Winnable. Both guys have a path to victory, right? Yes. Matt can easily get a hold of, uh, of Kevin's neck, and Kevin can easily attack uh, Matt's injured leg. So both of these leaders on the red and blue team are, are cheering for their guys extra hard. 50 seconds for extra points. Kevin on top. Matt has been sitting. It's been the trend of this whole tournament so far ever since the injury. Yeah, and that, that's a huge, huge, huge plus for, for Kevin. He does his best work on top. He's not going to waste as much energy being on top. And, man, I, I think he's got the advantage uh, if it stays Matt on bottom and Kevin on top. So even with Kevin in this position, yeah, I was going to say, Matt won't be able to elevate him with that knee. Oh, he's trying to use that X guard. Nice sweep. I'm always worried whenever Matt's throwing that injured leg into those guard positions. Yeah, he seems like he's compensating for the elevation by scooting his butt deeper into the into the position. <laughs> yeah. I saw a little uh, nose pinch right there. A little honk on the nose. If Evan, if that would have been Evan, he might have just pulled off Kevin's nose. <laughs> <laughs> Just stacking Kevin up. Nice pass. Professional pass. Matt's gonna have to be crisp because if, if he loses out on these positions, he might not get them back again. So he's he's taking his time. That's a heavy control. And Kevin Kevin's way too relaxed. Yeah. Kevin's definitely way too relaxed. He's really giving Matt. I mean, Matt's a monster in Mount. He's really got some really slick offense from here. And Man, he's, he, Kevin's got to be careful. Yes, coming up. That dies for that headlock. Oh, he just needs to get that backwards roll. He's trying to get that upside down guillotine. Wow. Look at that entry to that headlock. Man, immediately passing. Kevin's got to be careful Kevin from the turtles. turtle. Exposing too much of those hooks just slide right in. I think this was a mistake by Matt. We've seen Kevin is the hardest guy to finish from the back. He should have stayed in the front headlock position. Kevin's the only person that I know that gives his back so he can take a break. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, and then he's got offense, so he takes a break, and then he might yeah. finish you. Yeah, and he has. Yeah, you're right. He has offensive threats from his back. Take. But man, this is this is the position we saw Matt put away Jonathan Roberts last season. Yeah, he's got a professional arm trying. Kevin's just so tough to get that arm around the neck. And we're seeing it with Matt. He's having trouble getting that chest connection we're talking about. And he can't use his bottom hook properly. He can't use that outside leg. So he, he's really working with probably 80%, 75% back control. Not going to work against Starting to Kevin. hear heavy breathing from Kevin. If Matt can get that elbow flat to the mat underneath Kevin's head. This is the issue, man. Kevin's so confident in his back defense, yeah. he'll just keep showing. He's not going to get arm trying because he'll just keep showing the back. And it's just one of those positions where you just don't want to let it go because it's just such a good position. But with Kevin, sometimes you, you, you got to transition to somewhere yeah. else. You can hear Jake trying to coach Matt. Oh, he believes he can get it. He believes he can get this rear naked. But, I mean, he's got two minutes and 11 seconds left on the clock. He's been here for about a minute. 
and both men are just getting more and more tired. But well, Matt doesn't look tired at all. Kevin, his injured leg is in the bot, is underneath Kevin in this kind of a yeah, weird position. Yeah, seeing him grimace every now and then. That doesn't look fun. Yeah, definitely not fun. That affects the chair sits too. Chair sits are hard enough with good legs. Yeah. Right. I mean, Kevin's just his back back defense is, is black belt level. He's got 90 seconds. And it's not like he's just like stalling. He just keeps moving and just yeah, does he's a working. little movement. Yeah. He's working, but it's just. Uh, oh. He's starting to get That's underneath deep. the neck. That's deep. Yeah. And Matt's, Matt's trying to catch where in on he it. wants to be on point, so I'm, uh, he's hunting that choke. Yeah, he has no choice, though. Nice. Kevin's out. Oh, triangle. 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 Yeah, but his leg is eating, he's eating yeah. all that. And Kevin's heavy on his leg. He probably feels the brace, too, so he knows that's the bad one. There you go. I think Matt can finish him on bar. Well, he needs the neck right here. Jump in. Oh, there it is. Oh. Yeah, Kevin's so aware, though. <laughs> Look at that defense. Kevin just gator rolling. 35 seconds left. <laughs> got him oh, he's got down. it. He got it. He got the rear naked. <laughs> Amazing for Matt Elkins. Beautiful work. I, I mean, see, I didn't see his legs. I uh, mean, his hands locked up. Oh, he's just like up. Yeah, I think he's got a gable just right across the face. Yeah. A match against Kev. Uh, I got to train with Kev hundreds of times by now. I say hundreds, not hundreds, but train with Kev. I know that he's a, a super tough day for anybody, and uh, I know that my man's trying to rehab himself back to, to full health. So all the respect in the world to my man, the Liquid Terminator, for staying out there and, and finishing the game. Um, yeah, he's another one of those guys that 100 when they're out there 100 percent like it's it's just a different match, you know. Yeah, I tried, did everything I could. Matt's a monster, and uh, man, I've been wanting to like me and Matt go at it as hard as we could for so long, and about a couple of minutes in, I had nothing left in the tank, and I, man, he was on me so hard. I was like, let's survive, <laughs> see if we could stop him. And about 30 seconds in, he caught me finally where I couldn't move anymore, and he caught. A nasty, uh, it was a nasty like crank that would have turned into a choke if I turned my head. But honestly, he got me stuck good enough I couldn't turn my head, so I was out of there. That choke is going to give Matt Elkins six points. He is now at twenty-four. Kevin remains at fifteen points. The red team has sixteen, and the blue team has nine. Judo Justin, Judo Justin, still man, he's a freaking warrior like dude just puts in the time um definitely not an easy match in the sense of like he's just gonna go out there and like lay down for you and like let you choke him out um and he seems to be getting better every night like he was better tonight than he was the other night um in his matches and he made guys work longer and he wasn't i mean he had some good matches tonight against some high level dudes and he's still stuck in there for for over the three minute mark so i don't think it'll definitely be a good are you gonna beat him? I'm ready to grapple. Whatever, whatever he's got, I'm, I'll see where it goes, and I'll try to do my best to defend and do what I gotta do. Try to impose my will if I can. If not, then I'll defend. Uh, All right, so another red versus blue matchup, and the red is taking a commanding control with that last match. I mean, that was huge. Matt Elkins getting the choke on Kevin. They're up by seven points. And if James Regina can do any, if he can just get a sub, whether it's a joint lock or a choke, the red team will earn one extra point, and we'll be seeing a tie at the top going into next week. James immediately sits. This is Judo Justin's greatest opportunity. Yeah, but see, James is going in all in on leg locks, I think. I think he's going to look to try, try and take a leg. Yeah, he's just sitting into these double outsides. Easily. Nice job from Judo Justin clearing that knee line. Oh, Judo Justin using his other leg to pry open these leg locks. Doing some leg pummeling from underneath, but that ankle lock is tight. Oh, yeah, that's getting tight right there. Oh, you see him. He slips his heel out. And he looks like he's almost out, but he's getting sucked back in. I'm looking for that toe hold. Man, 
Judo Justin doing a great job clearing that knee. leg defense. Yeah, excellent, excellent leg defense. Ooh, let's go, Justin. I'm, I'm all in. Um, I don't know. Why do you think James is not going for a choke? He, he's been going for legs the whole season, and I think when you're that, like he just he's he just wants so score. far down on points now. Any submissions is gonna yeah, can really be help him. Yes, yeah, cannot be picked. Last thing he need like. If he doesn't get points from this match, he's pretty much over. Like he's not gonna make the playoffs. But to Lindsay's defense, I mean, this would be a great opportunity to collect a lot of points. You know? I think he was going out like he wanted that extra point, and so mm -hmm. he was trying to get like maybe a quick submission for yeah, legs. That four isn't bad though. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Justin All seems right. to be holding on. Doing a good job shrimping, but his arm Ooh. seems to be trapped. Oh, he nice a finish. Yeah, that was really, man, that, was, that came on super quick. That arm was extended, and uh, that's a big win for James and for the Red Team. So the Red Team just won the clock, guys. I think he might be the first person that pulled guard of me, and I think it was the most competitive I was so far. It's strange, but we played a leg lock thing back and forth, and I'm not really do leg locks much I mean they're not really a judo thing but uh, I feel like I did better with him engaging first like that though like I I was more prepared to fight a defensive game and I think that's what played out today with him uh, Justin Justin's cool man Justin judo dude so I was like I know this dude's gonna try to throw me over his head so I'll just sit down um, was told to push for like the leg entry got a little too excited uh, so it just wasn't really like focused on getting to position and then submission was just kind of going crazy for a second and then slowed it down got on top and then got him just with that wrist lock inverted arm bar and that was kind of how that ended so it felt good good tap uh first one of the series so it was good kind of get that out of the way that wrist lock gives james regina three points he is now at six justin gets zero points added to his total he is at five so for the red team, they are at 19, and the blue team is at 9. Zach Edwards. Thank you. Um, so that one, depending on how tired, tired I am, has the potentially to, potential to stalemate. Honestly, me and him have gone against each other before, and he's one of those guys that will just like, rah, 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 attack. And like if I feel that you're doing that, I have a, I have a habit of just like, Come on, give it to me. You know what I mean? And like burning too much time. And so like I I'm gonna try to take the lesson from Kamoy and apply it to, to Zach. Just gonna try and push through it, you know? I'm not gonna I didn't drive out here all the way to quit. Just gonna make the best of it and see where it takes me. You know, I've already competed against Sam. I had his back for like six minutes. I couldn't finish him, uh, so I'm definitely going to have to get in on a leg on Sam. Okay, last match of the night, and we've got guys that have faced each other. I believe they faced each other down at Stephen Aiken's tournament, and that match did go to EBIOT. It was an EBI format tournament, so it was a 10-minute match, and as the Squid Billy said, he did take um, Sam's back, and he had it for six minutes, couldn't finish, and in overtime, Pretty quickly, Sam got the rear naked choke. But this is definitely a different Zach Edwards. I mean, he's, he's not the same guy that was competing yeah, six months ago for sure. uh, at uh, in Perry, Georgia. I mean, you can saw even right there, he hits his back, he just does a grimace, and mm -hmm. uh, he, he's definitely not, not at 100%. Right. Sam a little bit more aggressive than usual. This is what we like to see. I like to see a Sam that's pushing the pace. Well, when you see an injured deer, well, you, you got to take him out, right? Like, that's part of the game. It and is. we need to see Sam get into killer mode because once he, uh, once Zach gets his guard pass, he doesn't have it. You see, he's immediately pass. I've never seen Zach get passed like this, ever. I, I've watched him compete a bunch of times. And he, he's just getting passed left and right. Yeah, I think his inversions are hindered. And so, yeah, Sam really needs to take advantage, and, and he needs to just take a submission and then walk on home. Sam playing some twister side, just doing a really good job controlling. 
Every single match when Sam passes, this is a setup point. He comes to Twister's side. He hangs out here. Watch we'll see how, how long Sam he hangs that out. arm on the bottom. He's looking to trap that bottom arm with his legs. Do like a baby arm? Yeah, I mean, he's got a, a slew of submission attempts or transitions he can do as soon as he gets that arm in between his legs. It looks like Zach's just giving it to him. Yeah, Sam's on top, and it, it's really interesting. He's just, he's almost like a robot. He's got very similar paths and, and plays. All of his matches have looked really, really similar. Yeah, but he seems to be relaxing in the pace again. Yeah, and again, you see an injured deer, you got to take him out quick. Zach's already grimaced. Yeah. He's not happy here. You think Evan would just put a ball and sock underneath Zach's back? <laughs> Probably. Uh, Evan would put one in his mouth. <laughs> just have a leather suit on. He's been <laughs> crazy. <laughs> okay, we got about four minutes left. <laughs> So what do you suggest from Sam? Like, let's just pick up the pace or, you know, Zach eats Where is he trying to go? Or... Like, he has three minutes and he's wasted like a minute having a conversation. Mm. It just doesn't look like he has a, any kind of direction of where he's trying to end up, like what submission he's trying to end up. He's just chilling in this in this twister side. Well, what he wants is he wants Zach to make a big movement. He's either going to grab the head or he's going to grab the arm. I mean. But with the amount of control that he has, he could, it looks like he could just take it. And Sam definitely doesn't look like he's a big mount player because he definitely has had opportunities. And I think it's smart, you know. He doesn't want to have to go against Zach's guard again. So he's playing it safe here. He's got three minutes to work. But, yeah, he has wasted two minutes. And those are precious when you're trying to put Zach into a submission, though. Yeah. Because if it took this long to set up one submission, if he misses this one, is he going to set it up in the same amount of time? Well, if he could just clear Zach's left arm, he's got a pathway to the neck. Nice. That was really good work right there by Sam. But he's cleared one of the arms. I mean, he really should be looking for a north-south or some type of choke variation. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity for that attack. I've never liked that triangle attempt right there. Uh, I think it's just a latch. Last people throw their, yeah, people thing. throw their legs yeah. up. It looks like he's using it to control that arm, though, far side. Mm -hmm. Create space to invert. We heard a little scream right there from Zach. You think he hurt his back? Yeah, when you see that hand, that's what I was telling me. You got that hand underneath. That puts so much more pressure on the lower back. Just yeah. adding a little wedge right there. I don't know. You think Sam's like psyched himself out a little bit when he's like, he said that they he might go to a no, stalemate. No, this is, this is that same Sam we saw in the beginning of the of PGF. Like, he just takes his time a little too much. He's not aggressive enough. Like, he, I, I'm kind of with you, though, Lindsay. I think when you think something, it's a lot of times that's what ends up happening. You know, you almost manifest that into being reality. And it looks like Sam is just... I mean, you can't just take twister side position for four minutes. And he still might get the submission, but... He, he's he's really missing opportunities. If you can to hold score. Twister side for four minutes, you can force your way to any other position from I, there. I completely agree. And he's really been exposed. And again, I, I think there's been lots of opportunities. And Zach has been trying. I mean, he's been trying to move, but he's just been on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't fault Zach at all for this match. I think he's been trying to get out from underneath. Well, this is tough because this is really this this match right here is going to kill Sam's chances of being season two champion. Now we're gonna we we're really in. If he doesn't get a submission in the last 35 seconds, it, it's going to be Elijah or Hunter. The gap's going to be too big for him to overcome. 25 seconds. <laughs> Sam's going to need to go for broke at this point. Attempt something. Yeah, he's still trying to control. Um, there you go. Oh, he's got that. It's deep. He's got it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. I mean, that is, 
Oh, and now Sam's back's, or excuse me, Zach's back is all jacked up. Sick guillotine. Sick guillotine. Yeah, that setup was weird. Um, he was still in that twister side as he was setting it up. And he expected him to rotate. Uh, yeah, th that at my gym is called a Bosa Constrictor, but power, power guillotine. I like, I really like that it's just like a. People think they're safe, and they think that once it's in it, it's or once it's even threatened, that it's gonna be like a power type move, and it's honestly a blood choke, and like it's it's a little ugly to me. Like I don't try ugly moves in jujitsu. It's just as a rule of thumb, I like try to avoid them, but I do like that one because it works off of like falling off the back when they turn into you inside control, and just especially with the chop. I wanted him to let me just finish him with the with the wrist lock, so it didn't have to go like that. But he's hurt. He's a monster. Whenever I have a gym, he's coming out for seminars, and I'm paying him for it. Ended up uh, catch me in some 100 percent. I think it was. That's what it felt like, anyways. So yeah, like the final finish, like a power guillotine kind of situation with the arm across on the other side. Yeah, like a neck crank, spine crank. Yeah, it's pretty bad right now. There was a pop that could have been my upper back. It was probably better, but my lower back is just preventing me from really doing anything right now. I'm trying to sit up and it's just super slow. I'm trying to invert and I can't bring my legs up. Not really an excuse though. My, my A game doesn't work. I gotta have a B game and a C game and a D game, so. Don't try and force something that ain't there. You know, if your body's not ready. Like, I knew I was injured, but I didn't think it was gonna affect me this hard. Or maybe I should have not taken a five day, you know, tournament as a, as a test to see if it would hold up. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. All right, so that guillotine gives Sam six points. He is now at 48. Zach has zero points added to his total. He remains at nine. So for this block, red team is at 19, and blue team is at 15. So we are going to add one point to every competitor on the red team. So Elijah is at 53. Jake is at 36. Evan, 32. Matt, 25. Mike, 13. Joshua, 10. Zach, 10. James, 7. Our blue team, Hunter, is at 53, Sam, 48, Stephen, 23, Kimoy, 23, Kevin, 15, Randy, 11, Grayson, 9, Justin, 5. So this segment of the show is brought to you by Dr. Michael Cantrell. He is an orthopedic surgeon in Huntsville, Alabama, and this is our match of the night. So what do you say, guys? It's got to be Hunter Colvin versus Jake Elkins. Even though Hunter promised us that we were going to see some Oklahoma versus Alabama <laughs> wrestling. Hmm. But, man, Hunter looked incredible. And Jake, man, he is such a beast. Jake has really shown himself to be a PGF superstar. And I think this match had everything. It had, you know, both guys showing really good guard work. I loved Hunter's passing. Of all the matches and some of the techniques I've seen, I'm going to go back and watch how Hunter passed Jake Elkins. Just how he used his float passing to kind of disconnect when he needed to, but then he could smother Jake to not allow Jake to stand back up. And, That's man, beautiful. that arm bar was sick. We're well past the halfway point, and it's amazing that we have a tie at the top. With six matches left, Elijah and Hunter are both at 53. And news alert, they face each other the last block of the season. So guys, is it going to remain neck and neck until they meet in that final showdown in block 15? I hope so. Yeah, I, I, I hope drama. so. Yeah, I <laughs> doubt it, but I hope so. Yeah, and it's this week what was awesome. We saw Evan Stapler continue to rise. And if we break down now, we look at the top eight overall. We've got Elijah and Hunter as the one and two spot. Sam, with that 
clutch, clutch finish. He's now five points behind the leader, so he's in at 48. And, man, talk about different styles and different ways to win. Sam looks like a completely different grappler than pretty much all the rest of these guys. He's patient, and he needs one stroke with his sword to get the kill. Mm, exactly, yes. Because I was nervous. I was like, oh, he's spending too much time in that twister yeah. side control. And, you know, all of us were. And then, you know, 10 seconds pulls the sword. Awesome. Yeah, and Jake Elkins had a tough week, and he, he looked good, and it was really cool to hear Hunter say, like, hey, Jake's the toughest guy I've faced so far, but now he's really fallen behind the leaders. I mean, he's 12 points out from third place, so he's in at fourth at 36. We have Evan Stapler, the blue belt, four points behind Jake. Wow. And Evan's <laughs> in fifth place overall. Can he break into the top four? I think he can break into the top four. The question is, will he stay in the top four? But with this team setting and also just his unpredictability. But like I said before, I think he's got a target on his back. So him even scoring again is going to be tough. Right. And it should be very interesting because in block 10, Jake Elkins and Evan Stapler. So, you know, uh, Matt Elkins was already like, all right, Evan, you're going to be paying for this for 52 <laughs> weeks. Avenge his so, brother. right. So, you never know. Jake Elkins, Papa, De Papa Bear Elkins is going to uh, maybe try to give Evan a little punishment there. And, oh, no. <laughs> and we've got Matt Elkins in at number six. Matt has had a very up and down season. Half the matches he's looked incredible. Half the matches he's looked like he's got a broken leg. Uh, and then in that seventh and eighth spot, we've got Stephen Aiken and Kamoy. And Kamoy's come all the way back now. And you heard him in, in one of his pre-match interviews where he was like, look, I want to be one of these dudes. I want to be one of the top four. Can Kamoy do it? I mean, he's fought his way all the way to the eighth spot. He is currently... Uh, he is currently 13 points behind fourth place. Can he make up that difference? I think he can. I mean, uh, he's done what I would hope he he was going to do, which is open up his jiu-jitsu, showcase a little bit more versatility. He's catching triangles from the bottom now. And also his mindset. Like, as, when I first saw Kamoy, I was like, oh, man, I hope he can, uh, you know, get used to having a bad day. And it seems like he's unfazed and he's he's making adjustments. So I, I believe he can. Right. I was super impressed with what I saw today from Kamoy. His movements were great. Like, his reactions were great. I really really think he's opening up and showing us more uh, 13 points. I don't know. I would love to see him catch up. That would be awesome. I, I just don't know yet. I'm, I'm doubting. And now looking at the playoffs, so the top four in the red, Elijah, Jake, Evan, and Matt, and they look to be pretty secure. I mean, Matt's in that fourth place spot. He's at 25 points, and we've got Megan Mike Johnson, who I think has missed a lot of opportunities to score, yep. and he's in at 13. It just doesn't look like he has the firepower to make the playoffs. Would you guys agree? I agree. He moves really well. Yeah. Like He can get to positions, but just sealing the deal in those positions has looked – non-existent yeah if he had if he had sam barboza's killing stroke he would be a very very scary grappler and then on the blue side it, it's much closer i mean we've got steven and kamoy in that third and fourth spot and we obviously have hunter and sam as the clear leaders i mean they're going to finish one and two on the blue team but in the third and fourth spot we've got steven and kamoy Kevin is eight points behind them, and Randy's in at 11. Do you think either one of those guys can replace Steven or Kamoy? I, in my opinion, no. I think Kevin is really, um, like you were saying, that the the PGF is, is claiming some victims now, and I think that Kevin, having had COVID, is really punishing his body right now. And so I don't know how much he would be able to turn it up and um, finish those submissions. And, and, and with Randy, you know, he has a, amazing wrestling. But then when it gets to the ground, you can see the, the blue belt is taking over. And just the lack of experience and the time on the mat is just keeping him from uh, solidifying those submissions, I think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Randy's just way too green. But this ultimately was a win for him, this whole uh, tournament. Uh, and Kevin, I mean, he... Kevin at his best is able to compete, but it's like rolling a dice, knowing where he is mentally and physically. Um, so I feel like he's going to fall short this season. 
And the one word I'd use to describe uh, what we've seen so far in the PGF is people out there, you, you should be scared. You should be a little bit frightened about joining the PGF in that it is brutal. You know, it is a different experience. This isn't a normal tournament. And we're seeing guys, even high level guys, start to break. And there is going to be a badge of honor of just making through it, not mentally broken. And the guys that, you know, a guy like Randy, we see him each match get stronger and stronger. And so even though his point totals don't reflect that, his spirit reflects that and his performances reflect that. Where some of the guys were seeing the opposite. And some of these guys are going to look back on this experience with kind of fear in their heart. They're going to go Mm. back and go, man, the PGF, like... I'd rather fight Gordon Ryan in a super fight because that's easy. You can go out there and get your butt kicked for one match. But the PGF is going to keep each game after game after game is going to keep sucking a little bit out of you each time unless you get your physical and mental ready and you're prepared to go to battle each and every match. Looking ahead to next week, there's three major storylines that I'm looking at and that we should all be following. First is obviously who's going to finish as season two champion. We've got Elijah Carlton and Hunter Colvin tied at the top with 53 points. There's one match that I have circled, guys, and it is definitely Elijah Carlton versus Sam Barboza in Block 10. If Elijah can manage to get the choke on Sam Barboza, it'll be a huge step in him making or him earning his way to mm-hmm. PGF champion. Yeah, and creating that distance from Hunter. For sure. I'm also looking forward to Jake Elkins and Evan Stapler. I just think there's going to be some fireworks going off in there. Yeah, and that's the (laughs) second big storyline is Evan Stapler. You know, he, can he continue his run and are his antics going to continue to wear out the patience of his teammates and opponents? What are you looking forward to? Which match are you looking forward to? Um, We're doing block 11 as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, Evan and Joshua Gibbs. I think that's going to be a fun match. Okay. And then the last storyline is who's going to make the playoffs in uh, for the blue team? Because we've got four guys that are like all bunched up. We've got Stephen Aiken, Kamoy Anderson at 23. They're at the third and fourth spot. And then Kevin and Randy aren't too far behind so will we see a jostling in position next week or will the top four on both sides remain the same tune in next week to find out the action this season has been incredible and we really are seeing some guys make a name for himself in this sport